We have uh, John Boziak in here. Thank you for coming in, John, to share your story. It's no. very interesting. Yeah, thanks for having me. You got your book out, Bent. Right, it's on uh, Amazon. Yeah, you can me. go pick that up. We'll have the link in the description to get it to read the full story. It's a little over 200 pages, but it's a quick read. Uh, Matthew Cox wrote it, like the other 10 that he wrote, and he writes them pretty good. You know what I mean? So, getting into all this, so first, where did you uh, grow, or where were you born? Uh, I was born in uh, Mount Clemens, Michigan. Mi and yeah. Michigan? Yeah, Michigan. And how was Michigan back then? Because it's all messed up now, right? Yeah, I mean, 80s and 90s, I guess, uh, you had your issues. Uh, you know, early 2000s, you had the collapse of the uh, dot-com bust and the, and the financial uh, markets collapse, and you had GM collapse, and you had uh, manufacturing <laughs> collapse, and you had, you know, all kinds of different societal problems. And then riding the wave behind that, you had heroin and come rushing in. So, yeah, it's a fun place. And then what happened out there in Michigan where there was – was it the governor or the mayor? He, he was doing something with houses. Were you there when he was doing that? Um, you might be talking about the mayor of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, Kwame Kilpatrick. Yeah, and he, like, he killed... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what'd he do? Some chick died up there at the mayor's mansion, some little little young uh, uh, escort, and... Uh, <laughs> was that what it was? Yeah, he was embezzling money, and he was buying his wife, you know, SU, him and his wife SUVs and all that shit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, they, they, they sent his ass up the road for all that shit. Did they, they actually yeah, indicted him? Yeah, indicted him? Yeah, he, he got time? Yeah, he went to prison. Do you know what he got? I, I want to say he got 10 years or 14 years, but I'm not. Good. I'm not, yeah. So they got his ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching a documentary on it. That's what I was asking about it. Yeah. And whatever he was embezzling, he was like, like, I don't know if he was, you know, like how all the houses out there, like they felt there was like a part of Detroit where all these houses were just abandoned and yeah, empty. Oh, that's most of Detroit, yeah. Yeah, and and that's partially because of him, right? Mm, yeah, I'm not aware of that. Uh, that if there uh, was some kind of scam going on with Kwame in the in the housing market, who in knows? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. no, Detroit's been there's entire city blocks that are that are no houses left on them. <laughs> you just the sidewalk and the street, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, the sidewalk, the street, and there may be a couple of trees, and all the houses are gone. Just Sit block after block after city block, and is that like? Yeah. For, do you think that was from like the heroin ep epidemic, well, or when just the jobs left and the crime rate, you know, went through the roof, and yeah. then everybody moved out of the city of Detroit? There's no opportunity in the city of Detroit. I mean, Nothing. not at least you know, not 10, 15 years ago there wasn't. So, yeah, you know, there's no jobs. I mean, there's no supermarkets in Detroit. Really, you got to leave the city of Detroit to go to a supermarket. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So when people left, the housing market just completely went into the toilet. Nobody even wanted the homes. You know, and then you got. The crackheads and the, everybody's, you know, selling dope out of them and people are getting killed. They're finding bodies in them. I mean, you know, once a year they do a sweep and they just go and they find all these bodies just all the way all over Detroit in all these homes. Wow. Yeah. So the city comes in. They just been knocking them down, taking possession, knocking them down. You know, have you been back there? I go back occasionally. Yeah. Does I haven't been back since probably 2016 or so. Yeah. Summer of 2016, maybe even summer of 2015. And how was it in 16? 15, 16, I, I hang out in uh, a little bit north of Detroit in Macomb County when I go back because that's oh, where okay. mainly, primarily my family lives. Uh -huh. And um, it's the same. Nothing changes there. Nothing yeah. changes. You know, everybody's doing the same thing. You know, everybody's sitting on the same couch watching the same TV, fucking the same girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, nothing ever really changes. It's like it's like, it's like like a goddamn uh, 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 time bubble yeah. just surrounds that place. I, mean, uh, you could, I could leave and go back 10 years later and everybody's literally doing the same exactly. Exact, yeah. Working at the same job. It's, mm -hmm. it's wild. Yeah. yeah, my hometown's the same way in Pennsylvania. Yeah. You can go back 20 years from now. Th those people's kids will be doing the same thing that they did and, and on and on. Like you said, same thing on TV, yeah. same girls, yeah. same people married, yeah. same miserable marriages. It's wild. <laughs> where, it's I was, wild. where I was there before. Uh, do you have any brothers and sisters? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have two younger sisters um, and an older brother uh, that I haven't seen in like 20 years. Uh, and I have a younger brother, uh, Chris. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I got some siblings. And then when you were growing up, how was your family life? Hmm. Cliche, I guess. Single mother, you know, dad wasn't there. Um, so your mom was raised in all of you guys? No, oh, no. See, this is so, – so me and my siblings – so me and my dad, me and my dad has, so my older brother, my two younger sisters, um, I mean, we, different, we have different moms. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And me and my younger brother have the same mom, but different dads. Okay. Yeah. And okay. then me and my younger sisters, 
and my younger older brother like have different different moms and but the same dads. I can make you dizzy. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So in your household growing up, it was you, your brother, and just me, my brother, and my mom. Okay, yeah. right. So yeah. she's a single mother single taking mother. on two yeah. sons. And, and you know, for the most part, my mother was always responsible. You know, I can never really remember her ever like doing drugs or, you know what I mean? Nothing. It was I didn't grow up in that kind of crazy wild household. It was just she had to work 40, 50 hours a week. Yeah, well, she was trying to support the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we always had, like, a, a decent house, a decent place to live. You know what I mean? And, mm. like, I didn't realize that I grew up poor until later on, until I reached, my, like, my teenage years, until later on in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so I had, I was happy. Like, I had no idea that we were dirt poor. Yeah, yeah no but idea. you had a happy home, and yeah, there was food yeah, on the table sure, and everything. Yeah. It was not like you were... We're doing all right. But she just had to work 50 hours to, yeah. to take care of you guys, yeah. really, right? Yeah, she did. Okay, and then... Um, you went well. Actually, when when was the first time you got in any trouble? How old were you when? When? How old? My earliest memories in life are smashing windows in the side of a warehouse, and then some biker grabbing me and taking me home to my mom. I must have been seven or eight years old. Really? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it started early. Yeah, I was always wild. Okay, and then you went to high school. Sure. Yeah. Uh, in Michigan. Uh, yeah, I went to high school in Michigan. Um, well, it was back and forth. I, I did a lot of my most of my school was in Florida, in Southern Florida. So, but yeah, and I went to high school in um, Michigan and Florida. Yeah. Okay, and then you finished that. Yeah. Okay, and then there, there was a time period where you were homeless, right? A number of years. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, so when when did the, how did you become homeless? I was out of hand for my mom. Yeah. She just couldn't. She couldn't handle it as as I got into my teenage years. So her attitude towards it was like, you want to go and you want to do you, then go and do you. So you kept committed. You kept getting in trouble, yeah. little things. Yeah, yeah. Boys home here, a couple of months in the juvenile center here. You know, uh, um, I was in Boysville a lot uh, growing up. Um, ten months here, nine months here, ten months there, starting when I was like 13 on forward. Damn. And what did you do that got you put in there? Mostly shoplifting, uh, not going to school. I call it truancy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just being a kid, you know, stealing bikes, stealing cars, uh, doing breaking and enterings, um, vandalism. Just constant petty I stuff. I was out of control. Yeah. Just completely out of control. Yeah. And then one day you come home, you know, just to put it like simply, your mom's basically like, look, you can live by my rules or you can continue to do the nutty shit that you're doing. And if you're going to go that way, then yeah. go. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's when the homelessness started? Yeah. Yeah, that's when I was just out there couch surfing. You know yeah. what I mean? Just couch, couch to couch. And then so I would sleep outside in parks. I was too young. I didn't really have any money, so I didn't have a car. And you were 14 like and that. homeless? Yeah, 13, 14. Whew. Yeah. That's got to take a toll. So now from the time you're homeless until you start committing, like, heavier crimes. Yeah. How long were you homeless, you know, bouncing around doing petty stuff mm -hmm. to where you started to really get into the crime game well i've always been really into the crime game you know yeah my whole life i've always that's just second nature right fortunately you know well okay so how many years were you homeless for i mean i know you said it was like on and off i mean yeah, yeah i mean technically I, i've been homeless since i was 13 till i was maybe till i was maybe 19 damn that's about six years. I didn't really have, like, a residence, per se. You know, I was just everywhere doing whatever I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then I saw that you were in Florida, and you ended up getting a, a college degree or an art, arts degree, right? I did. I received my uh, my associate's degree from the uh, Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. That's awesome. Yeah. And what got you into the art? I've always been into art drawing. I've been drawing since I was a little kid. You know, it was always a way to occupy my time, coloring, drawing, and then it's just slowly progressed throughout my life from there and then you know i got interested in computers and the digital age came in and yeah i figured out you can make art with computers yeah and i was hooked yeah that, and that was it that was it for me yeah and is it um how many tattoos do you have um if you had a oh, guess I, I don't know i'm covered yeah so like i don't really count them now do a lot of them have meaning meaning or just like things that you like that are cool yeah, most of it's um, just art driven. Like, I don't. There's not really really deep meaning behind yeah. any of my tattoos. Yeah, you know, like some people have like a whole back, and it's supposed to mean this or that or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Nah, no, no, yeah no. Neither am I. Yeah. The same thing with me. I just like getting tattooed, and I like drawing, and you know, certain images always like stuck with me. So, yeah. And yeah. then like later on, I got into like the Illuminati and like 
yeah, all of the secret about, society yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, and I just became obsessed with that. That's yeah. funny you said. I just had this. I have this kid in maybe every ten days, and um, his name is Brandon. Mm-hmm. And he first came in because he hit uh, three hundred k in a month on Tesla, and he was just a guy who cut hair. Right. I, well, he, he was actually in trading. Yeah, in the stock market. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So he was he was gonna play football. He hurt his back real bad, really really bad, where he couldn't play anymore. Uh, finally, you know, they tried to get him to do all these surgeries. He he wouldn't do them. He's like, look, I'm not doing it, right? So finally, he gets a medical marijuana card, and I mean, he couldn't even walk, and he started doing the marijuana for you know medical purposes, right. and he did it, and then he started cutting hair. So he went from not even being able to walk with, with the medical marijuana, no pain pills. Mm-hmm. To doing that. Well, then, you know, the haircutting thing kind of got boring for him, right. I guess. So he started looking into the stock market a little bit. And he studied her for about a month and he took 1800 and just, you know, hedged his bet and just picked the right, right one. And right. then Telsa shot up. I think uh, the middle of August, you know, he made like 60K, yep. took a little bit out to live, but then reinvested the rest. And then the 29th, it shot up. Yeah. And that's when he hit the 300K. Yeah. So, uh, he was in here, and he, I keep having him in because he's big into that Illuminati and yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, MLK thing. And then sure. there's like uh, uh, MLK. Yeah, not Martin Luther. Demo- MK Ultra. Uh, yeah, MK Ultra. Yeah, yeah, I'm new to this. Come yeah, on that wave. Yeah, yeah, MK Ultra yeah, Event yeah, 201 yeah. or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, he it was, goes deep, man. Yeah, it goes deep. He was spinning. He was in here about a week ago. Yeah. He was spinning my head, and then I, I, I it's went. Fun. It, all, all that shit's fun, man. Dude, I went and I fun. looked it up, and he was saying, you know, you got to go to DuckDuckGo to, yeah. to, to, to find it because it's not going to come up on... Uh, Google censors. Yeah, they yeah. censor everything. Yeah. So I, I looked up everything he said. Bro, it was all there. Tom Hanks, Lady Gaga. Yeah. All these... I, yeah. couldn't, I couldn't fucking yeah. believe it. It's pretty wild. And he's dead set that Epstein isn't dead. Oh, he thinks he's alive. He is, uh, he is 100% well, positive because... That's one theory. Yeah, I'm not saying I believe it or don't believe it, but... Yeah. It's uh, funny. Uh, I was having that conversation up here uh, with Matt on the way up here, and me and him were having the whole Epstein, you know, thing. And Matt's like, oh, yeah, he killed himself, he hung himself. I'm like, listen, man, you don't even understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you have no clue. You yeah. Know? It goes deep, man. No, so Brandon, he's taken out pictures after pictures after pictures, of, like the ear, the jaw, like oh, he's, all, all this stuff. He and we ha- it. Yeah, we put him up on the screen, and, I mean, you could see... I mean, the ear does. I mean, I you know it could be photoshopped to nose, yeah. but it don't match. It's fun, you know. It yeah, it is, and yeah. you know, it's very possible that he could be alive, and they just ripped him out of there because of all the information yeah. that he's got on these that's you know true. heavy hitters. All the dirt he's got on the Clintons and everything. That's else, funny man. you're into that, man. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you you oh, have that's my hobby. It's yeah. my full time hobby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, dude. You know, you you got to be a smart dude to to you know be able to comprehend that yeah. or have an open mind to it. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people are just like you yeah, gotta be right. kind of crazy too. Yeah, like you have to have that kind of eccentricity to you. I, I think. See, see, I think the, I think crazy is good. When somebody says you're crazy, Tommy, I'm like, thank you, I appreciate it. If you can make it work for you, then why yeah, not? yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, run with it. So well, now you're homeless for a couple years. You're 19, mm. and then uh, what? What? What got you into like the identity theft and and the credit card, mm. all that? What got you into that? Um, my brother. Yeah, my younger brother. Uh, he, Chris. Yeah, he he was just messing around with it. You know, he wasn't really, like, trying to make millions of dollars and, and commit, you know, massive amounts of fraud. But he was I guess he was just playing around with it. I mean, he was, I think, three or four years younger than me at the time. I think maybe he was 18 or something like that, 18, maybe 19 at the time. And, um, you know, I, I kind of learned about it from him. Like, he turned me on to it. And, you know, that's when I was like, okay, well, and then I just kind of just went off on my own tangent. You yeah. Know, I became obsessed. Like, yeah, I became just completely obsessed with it. He was just kind of like walked away from it and set it down. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to college and get a degree and, you know, so he was kind of just off the way from away from you because yeah. I know you're fucking, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> he knows I'm crazy. My, my brother knows I'm insane. Yeah. Obviously. And, uh, yeah, so he got the fuck on about his business and I, I just became completely obsessed with it. So he was kind of just like messing with it. And then he kind of turns well, you on to it. My brother's a nerd. It. Yeah. He's always, you know, he's been in the computers and, and you know, gaming and, and all that shit since as long as I can remember. So I think it was only natural that he knew about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was kind of the extent of my brother's involvement. Like, he, he knew about it and he turned me on to it. But I'm, I was the one that really 
took it. And you ran took it to it. the next level. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Now prior now, to that, fucking cool. Now prior to that, did you have any legit jobs? Um, yeah, I did. Uh, I did glass uh, work down here in South Florida for about ten years. Uh, you know, windows and doors. I can cut mirror, fab mirror. Oh uh, wow! Do so you were doing that before the whole. That's what I. Yeah, that's what that was like. My first job I ever. That's like a first trade I learned. You know, was commercial and residential glazing and all that shit. Yes, you know, I bet people that you know just read bits and pieces of what you did would never never think you had a job for ten years that was legit. I did, yeah, and, yeah. and it was it was because of that job that turned me to fraud, because I had I, I was just working manual labor and it was just such grueling work. <laughs> I mean, South Florida, it's it's a motherfucker working outside in yeah. South Florida in the summertime. You dig what I'm saying? And it was just like I I knew that I had to do so. I was like, I can't. I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. Like I knew that I had to do something. And you but did this that for 10 it. years, bro? Yeah, and that wasn't it. Whew. Yeah, it wasn't it. I was like, I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, well, at least, at least you made it 10 fraud. years. Like, I, I knew I had to do something. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I knew I had to do something. I was either going to tattoo or do some kind of artistic. I was going to do something, but I knew that manual labor just wasn't. Yeah. Absolutely not. I would think that 10 years of manual labor in South Florida – in yeah. the heat. Uh, I mean, it, it, you know, I was a youngster yeah. when I was doing it. You know what I mean? So I could I could, I could take it. I was young, you know. And I'd wake up early and I'd get my Gatorade and put my fucking work boots on. I'd be out there with the rest of the dudes fucking sweating and you know what I mean? Like, But at the end of the day, man, you really put a ceiling. You know, I, I, there's a ceiling on the amount of progress you can make in life when you have to rely on, you know, a situation like that to – to drag you through. Yeah. You know. So now you do that, and now Chris kind of introduces you to... He turned me on to He the turns you on to yeah, it. Yeah, he turned me on to it. And then, and okay, so now he, he gives you kind of... He turns you on to the information, let's say. Yeah. And then what do you do? Oh, I just... It was my 24-7 after yeah. that. I, I would be up all night just reading tutorials online, learning every... I scoured the internet for every piece of m little morsel of fucking fraudulent information that I could get. And I spent weeks doing it. And just, I mean, I had hard drives just compiled of all of these different fucking scams, all of these different um, tutorials on how to do scams and how to carry out bank fraud and what wire fraud was. I didn't know any of this. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a fucking a dirtbag from the street. You know what I mean? I'm selling fake ecstasy pills in Miami and shit like that to hustle. That was my hustle. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a street dude at this point. I'm young, I'm, but I'm a street dude. I wasn't even into technology or savvy with any of that shit. And um, it was, it just became an obsession. And I just, I, le I learned about everything. You know, wire fraud, uh, bank fraud, money laundering, credit card fraud, uh, every, 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 every kind of fraud that existed. So basically, when, when Chris throws this to you, you're not dead set on what you're going to do. You're, you're just scouring oh, around no, 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 no. To, to see which one I is. I was bumbling around. Like, I was just. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Like, I knew there was some money there, but I didn't think that there was the... I didn't think it was going to go where I took it. I There was no a way I could ever have seen or predicted that. It, honestly, I just stumbled along, and it was through a lot of dumb luck and just a lot of perseverance that I, I did what I did. But in the beginning, it was like, cool, we can go and get free shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cool, I don't have to pay for gas anymore. You know what I mean? I can go to any restaurant I want now and eat whatever the fuck I want. I can go to I can go to fucking Publix and buy whatever the fuck I want now. Right. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that to me was just like I couldn't believe it. Like my my entire life had changed. You know what I mean? Because I had no furniture in my house because I couldn't afford it. You know what I mean? I had I had an apartment in Coral Springs, I had like a two bedroom apartment in Coral Springs, which was like it was like a thousand bucks a month. You know what I mean? But for somebody only making like twelve bucks an hour, you know what I mean? Working manual labor, that's I'm fucked. And that's twelve dollars an hour. Now that's what you're making, but then they're taxing that, they're taking this, exactly, you know. Exactly. So yeah, at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, you ain't getting much. Yeah, I'm eating ramen noodles and macaroni and cheese, brother. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm fucking getting up in the morning and, and walking to the bus stop and right. having to catch the bus, whether it's pouring rain or not. Right. So now you go from so my quality of life wasn't all that great. Right. So and I go from that to being able to do basically whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Yeah, and I think whatever I, my imagination, you know, could have could dream up, I would go and try and do it. And it would just happen for me. And it was, it, the whole thing was just got completely insane. <laughs> and you I know? think anybody can relate to that because you go from 14 running away, you're bouncing around homeless to you're 19. Then you're doing almost 10 years of manual labor yeah. for peanuts. And now you can go 
yeah. get gas whenever you want. You could put 93 yeah. in there. You can go to Ruth oh, Chris yeah. if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no more 87, oh, right? Ain't no more 87. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now, now you get, now you get into it. You decide to go with the identity theft <clears throat> and like the credit card fraud. Yeah. Right? I kind of felt like the carding was going to pan out the most. Just yeah. because I think I had the, the most success with the carding early on. Yeah. Now, what is carding? Um, there's there's different different variations um, of it. There's there's digital carding, uh, where somebody gets access to the the information that's only on the front of the card. Mm -hmm. So the card number, the expiration date, your first name, your last name, and then basically your shipping address and, you know, all the queries you fill on, like say on online, when you go to a website, you know, people take that information and you can go online to whatever website you want to go to and, and, and try and use the credit card information to virtual card things to an address or to whatever you want to do. Um, and then there's in-store carding where you actually have a physical card um, that you purchase from a vendor on one of the websites or one of the, I mean, now I have, I have no idea how it works now, but this is, you know, 2005, 2006 when I was, this was pre Silk Road, you know, this is pre all of that, you know, we, we were communicating through like ICQ chats and, and we were going on like, um, carding forums that were, you know, on Google. So they'd get shut down every other day. And it was like a whole thing. So it was constantly changing to get back to constantly that, changing. that kind of like dark, I, I guess it's the dark web now, right? Was it dark web around then? No. I mean, this was the onion router was just being oh, yeah, the onion introduced router. back then. You know, so there was nothing. There, it just didn't exist. Yeah. You know? So, so everything had to be done through VPNs and proxies. Mm -hmm. You know, virtual private network and with the SOX proxy on top of the virtual private network. Yeah. Yeah. So you could you could buy a stack of credit cards already done? Yeah, you could. Yeah, if you found the right vendor that would provide those to you, yeah. You could you can get them with the numbers embossed on them and everything ready to go. Or okay. you could buy them blank and emboss them yourself and encode them yourself. Okay. Yeah. So what'd you start with? Uh, I started just buying them already encoded and embossed and yeah. And then that, then you start making money and everything else, right? Now I'm going, I'm getting laptops, I'm getting big screens, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, now I'm getting the big ticket items. Yeah. You know what I mean? At this point. And uh, we're putting them on Craigslist, eBay and, and you know, selling them, making a little bit of cash like that. Yeah. So the money you were making, you weren't really laying low. You Were you, were you living the high mm -hmm. life or trying to live low? I, at what point? Let's say like at this point. Cause like it, the very beginning? Yeah. I wasn't really getting money like that in the very beginning. Like yeah. I was making, I was getting enough money to where my apartment was paid for, my groceries were paid for, I could put gas in my car to go where I wanted to. But I didn't have Lamborghini money. You yeah. know what I mean? I couldn't go buy a Rolex or anything like that. I, I wasn't at that, at that point. Th this was get by money and, my and, and live basic decent. basic needs were taken care of. Right. Yeah, and I had all the free time to do whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I just invested all my free time back into the fraud. And then what what led to what was the next step that got you to that next level? That's when I decided I was like, you know what, I'm done paying 30 to 40 to 60 dollars for one card. And the shit doesn't even work half the time. You know what I mean? When I'm in a store and I'm getting declines, you can get chased out of Walmarts. You know what I mean? I'm getting chased out of CVS's. Like people asking me for ID, I got all kinds of crazy shit going on because, you know, the product that I was getting wasn't even that good. Like the cards that I was getting weren't that good. Like the, the, the printing was off kind of like the, the signature strip just wouldn't be quite right. You know what I mean? Like there was always something kind of off about the card. So it was like, you know, I'm, I'm getting a shit product and I was like, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way to do this, a more efficient way to do this. So I just, you know, I did my research and I, I just started buying equipment slowly, like buying equipment on eBay. You know, the to, printer, to, the embossers, the encoders, because I was just going to do everything myself. You know what I mean? If my car breaks down when I was poor, when I was a kid, I didn't have money to go take it. So I had to learn how to fix my car myself. So I've always had that same mentality going into anything. Like, I'm not the dude that hires a plumber that come to my house to fix my fucking toilet. Right. I'm going to fucking buy a, root, a snake and go fix that shit myself. Right. That's just the kind of person I am. So I had that attitude going into it. So then you start getting the actual machine so you can do it yourself. I did, yeah. And are, are they, was that a big investment? At first... The amount of money I was working with wasn't that much, so I had to get the the shittier equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, a manual embosser, <laughs> had a fucking wheel on the top of it. You know what I mean? With the characters, you had to spin it and fucking and, ha and half the time it didn't line up right. And I remember I had uh, just a real cheap um, thermal printer, like a DTC, like a Fargo DTC printer, 
which is a, a direct to card, and it just like is that kind of like a zebra thermo exactly, thermal yes, printer. Exactly. I had yeah. one of those. I had a zebra. a zebra. I used the zebras for the um, the UV because if you use any credit card and you put it under UV light, there's certain uh, security features that are ultraviolet. That oh, only really? show up ultraviolet. Yeah. And the, so, and the zebra did that for you? The zebra was the only printer I could find that would print ultraviolet. It had a ribbon, an ultraviolet ribbon you could buy for it. And you print ultraviolet, you couldn't see it, but except for under ultraviolet light. Oh, so, shit. So I would just do the template on the Photoshop and you know, line it all up. Yeah. Oh, so right. you're good with Photoshop. Well, yeah. I have a, at this point, I have a, a, my graphic design, my degree in graphic oh, design. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so they, I learned oof. how to do all that shit when I went to oh, college. That Photoshop's a headache. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, I fuck around all day and all night on that shit. Really? Yeah. Man, you got to teach me that. Yeah, because I I play with that. I mean, I learned Final Cut, but man, Photoshop for me that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah, once you learn the tools and you learn the shortcuts for the tools, well, they got seven hundred thousand tools. Right, and there's also seven hundred thousand ways to do <laughs> to get achieve the same outcome. So it's all it's tailored to you, and that's the 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 purpose of the the software. Right, that's, right. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, so you can narrow it down. to So it's not like you have to learn how to do it a certain way with mm -hmm. Photoshop. You can learn how to do it your way. So Photoshop learns with you as you're progressing through whatever you're doing. Like, cause I watch people on on the internet and I see them doing tutorials on Photoshop, and some of the ways they're they're doing shit, I'm like, there's I wouldn't do it that way. Like, there's just such a you know what I mean. I can hit Command C and open this tool and pull this over and do this and, and put this filter. You know, and it's I got to the same place they got to, but with like ten less steps. So, dude, when you when you start up your YouTube channel, you got to do a tutorial in Photoshop. Think I should do some yeah. some, some Photoshop. Yeah, I, I mean, I I know you're John Boziak, you yeah. know the credit card guy, but I mean, yeah, hell yeah, because who who wouldn't want you, right? Yeah. You like you you did it with the cards, you, you know. You were I know it was illegal, but I'm saying you were right. successful. Right. But right. obviously, you know what the hell you're doing with Photoshop. Yeah. You know, doesn't matter how you used it, you know how to use it. I mean, I'd watch you over some other guy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Some square. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. I would. I mean, if it's the same, you're right. If it's the same, you're just trying to get the, the message. You're right. And you pulled, you know, you pulled this off for quite a bit. It's not like, yeah. you know, you yeah. did it for a week and got hit. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know what you're doing. So sure. I would look at it like, well, if he knows what he's doing to do this and, and pull it off for as long as you did, shit, I'm watching him because he knows what he's doing. Yeah. You know, no matter what I'm what I'm making. So you got, you got the machines on like the... I went on eBay. Oh, you got these all the machines on eBay. Everything's readily available on eBay. <laughs> what the hell? Day. You can go on eBay and buy everything you need. Yeah. So everything you had gotten to to punch these cars is still on eBay to this day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the initial investment was what do you think? How much? Oh, it was maybe a thousand bucks, maybe less than a thousand bucks. Okay, so you yeah. take that I'm buying used shit, you know, old fucking shit that's been sitting in the back of a warehouse shit, you know? Two hundred dollars for a printer, hundred dollars for an embosser, you know, shit like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now you're now how long are you on Using those machines before you say okay. Before I got to upgrade to before the bigger ones. Before it's like, all right, Johnny. It was a while. Yeah, yeah it was about a year. Oh wow, okay. it took a long time. And now, yeah. did you like save a little bit to uh, to invest in to better? Or at first, you're just like sliding the card, you know, using it like you can. Or were you always putting a little bit aside to get a better machine to make things easier? Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't plan it out. I didn't put money aside to save for better equipment or anything like that. Yeah, it was like I, I came into like a chunk of money, and I was like, oh, I should need to upgrade my equipment. It was that kind of deal. It was like, okay, I got this little chunk of money right now, and I can go ahead and buy a better printer. So I would buy the better printer. Yeah. You know, the one that was like $5,000 instead of $200. Okay, so you slowly got better equipment over time. Yeah, it built it up over, over the course of maybe a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you so you're dealing with the shit equipment for a year, but you're making it work, obviously. It's, I'm doing all right. You know what I mean? Like it's still not the best. Like I still I'm not confident enough to walk into, like a, a Best Buy and try and get six thousand dollars worth of fucking. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I don't have that kind of confidence in my product yet. But yeah. So what kind of confidence did you have at this earlier time to to use it with? Oh, any grocery store, any restaurant, any gas station, any you know. CVS, Publix, supermarkets, all that, all that, just small fry shit. Small fry shit that where nobody's even gonna, if your shit, if it gets declined for $17, they're not gonna ask you for ID and call the police. Right. You know what I mean? Like, this shit isn't gonna happen, so yeah. Right. Okay. So you do that for a year, and then you said it was about another year until you got the, the heavy until duty. I upgraded to the better equipment. And so I actually physically had a product that looked like it was issued from a financial institution. And you couldn't tell. No, no. You could pull yours out of your wallet and put it right next to mine, and there was no difference because I was using the same printers that they that they were using to make credit. You know what I mean? That the banks were using. I had I had a guy in uh, China that I was getting uh, my holograms, my Visa logos, my Mastercard logos sent. You know, he was mailing them to me, and they were official. You know, the heat heat foil press. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all that equipment off of eBay. 
everything off eBay. Yeah. That's amazing. It is amazing. So the only thing you really had to get like on these forums and sites were the blank cards, right? That's, I mean, that's what it sounds like. Am I following you or, or am I no. wrong? You could buy the blank cards like you buy uh, stock paper for your printer. Really? Yeah. Comes in, they come in just long sleeves and they're blank and they already have the magnetic strip on them and they're white, blank. They're canvas. You throw them right in the printer, cue your shit up on Photoshop, your, your template, cue it all up, line it up, print it out. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you really didn't even need, like. No, I didn't. I mean, I would only need them for the numbers to encode to the cards. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what, and then is that, was that, expe was that an expensive thing or? Not if you buy in bulk. Okay. Yeah, if you're piece buying, it, they do get expensive, twenty, thirty dollars. But if you buy in bulk, you get better deals. Right. So how many were you and buying? And the validity rate was a little bit higher as well. Because some of them wouldn't work. Yeah, I mean, like say out of like if there's like a, you might have like a they they'll get they'll have a base. Um, maybe I'll give a little bit of context about where these numbers come from. Yeah. Like how all that how all that works. Yeah. So anytime you go to CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Publix, and you swipe your magnetic strip, um, that track information that metadata that's on your magnetic strip um, gets saved to a server somewhere and then you've got these kids over in ukraine russia wherever the hell they they get this information they hack it because that's just what these kids do and so they get this information and they sell this information um on the black web or dark market whatever per se to people who are either encoding cards and using them or virtual carding or whatever so that's how you can get access to these to this to this metadata now this metadata is absolutely useless if you don't have a encoder first of all to program a, the magnetic strip on the card that you're printing now who are you these along? yeah but i mean who are they hacking to get the information so i don't know i mean you've seen big data breaches over the past maybe five or six years i think uh Wall target got hit there was like six million accounts or something like that were jeopardized oh, okay a uh, Walmart got hit, so okay. Now that makes sense. When they come out in the news every five or six years, mm -hmm. sometimes you say, "Oh, big massive data breach." Well, that's basically what it is. Is they're going after these this oh, metadata? Oh, okay. Because that's where the gold is. Is in these 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 this metadata. Yeah, yeah, I heard that, but I I thought it was just like somebody hacked their system just to hack their system or whatever. But when they say that metadata. They're hacking the system and they're getting credit card numbers yeah. that were ran it's through. It's called dump information. That's the technical terminology for it is a dump. Okay. Because it's a dump of information from okay. the card to the system. Okay. I follow you. Okay. So keep going now. Right. So, yeah. So you can go on these online forums and you can buy uh, these, these this metadata from these kids or you can buy the virtual cards or you can buy the physical plastic. Now, there's guys that just sell the plastic. And it, that's eventually what I ended up doing. Um you know that's where I made all. That's where I was pigeonholed, and that's where I made all my money at. But so yeah, you go on these these, these forums, you you get them, you buy the numbers, you buy the encoder, uh, you can program the magnetic strip that's on the back of the credit card with these numbers that you buy, and then you're off and running. So now at this point, are you making are you making them and selling them then? No, you're just making them for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's when you start to blow up. That's when I start to make a little bit better money. That's when that's when I have the confidence to go anywhere in in swipe for anything you know and i can get cocky with it if it gets declined i say run it again even though i get it you know i know it's going to get declined again yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. just to be you know just be a prick yeah um you know so i had the, i had the confidence to go anywhere and do anything at this point so then i started making a little bit more money not much but a little bit more money okay and then what was the next step to where you're you're kind of hitting it pretty big that really wasn't until i started selling cards that really wasn't until i i decided i was going to be a plastics vendor myself Okay. Because I figured out that's where the money is. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this in-store carding. And, okay, now mind you, on a good week, let's say you get five laptops and ten big screens. You're doing all right. But that's not sustainable. You know what I mean? Like, you can't do that every single week for months and for years. Like, it's just not sustainable in any um, stretch of the imagination. Because, A, you, you have to go to stores in your area. You know what I mean? Because you're not, you know, you're not driving hours. You, 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 you might get to that point. You might have to start driving hours. But how many times can you go and buy a laptop from the Walmart that's in West Palm Beach? Yeah. How many times can you go there and buy a laptop or a TV or a PlayStation before they get hip, before they see the same dude walking in Right, every and they're week. like, they're like, why is this guy buying? And he's got different IDs and different, you know what yeah. I mean? It's all, yeah. come on. I mean, you can't, it's not sustainable. Right. It's cool to fuck around with. And if you want to run out and get something real quick, but it's not. When you try and live off of it to really be like, okay, can, is, this mo is this model scalable? And it just, it just wasn't.
because and also the other thing is now you have let's say you make it right and you get 20 big screen tvs and, and 20 laptops right okay that's great now you have them but right. now you got more work to do because now you got to find a way to yeah, flip you them got, right you gotta flip them so you're gonna so you're automatically gonna take a loss there because nobody's gonna pay retail right you know what i mean then you got to deal with the people and you know people it's just it's just the whole i mean it's cool like i said it's cool and you make a little bit of money at first but once you, you get a little bit exhaust that you start looking for other avenues so at, th at this point that's what you're doing you're getting the sc big screens Whatever it may be, point, and then yeah, and then where are you flipping them to? People or like Craigslist. eBay? E Craigslist and eBay was my that, main two. That was your main avenues, thing. Avenues, yeah. And you said you did that for about a year. I did, yeah, about a solid year. And then you said, look, this is the cap on this, basically. Well, you know, I kept getting run out of stores, and you know, I, my me and my brother got chased out of a store, and he got arrested, and you know, I got away, and it was like a whole, it was like a whole thing, and like I just, it was getting too sketchy. Was that you your know? first real scare? It wasn't no like I had there, I had been a couple other times where I had to take off out of the store you know what I mean like just like kind of casually walk out or like demand that they give my card back because a lot of the times these cards when they get declined there's certain there's certain errors that'll pop up on the screen now sometimes it'll just say um, general decline they're like oh it got declined or sometimes it'll say hold call hold the card call because th then it was flagged for fraud oh okay. You know what I'm saying? And some some people working behind the cash register are fucking dumb. They're like, ah, it says hold call. I don't know what this means. So you're like, oh, it just happened twice today already. I'll call my bank. And you, but some motherfuckers, you get them old, the old bitch ass motherfuckers behind the counter. They're not giving that card back. Yeah. And they're calling the man. They're calling. You know what I mean? They pick up the phone and they don't even tell you. They just immediately pick up the phone. And now and what now do, what are like, you doing? Then you start yelling at them. Sometimes you just walk out. Depends yeah. on the situation. Uh, it also depends on um, who's behind the counter. Sometimes you just walk out. Sometimes you get chased out. Sometimes you just demand your card back. You know, you start just getting all irate. Just to make make it look more legit, right? Yeah, yeah. And what would you say, like, during that in the in-store card thing and everything else, mm -hmm. what store and which time was your biggest scare where you were kind of like, oh, shit? That was when me and my brother got chased out of the, the Walmart. Uh, it was that Walmart? Well, yeah, because he went to jail. When he got ch chased out, one of his flip flaps fucking blew out in the parking lot, and they fucking tackle him, and I got away, and like that was like I was like, okay, this this is fucked up, you know what I mean? Like I can't can't do this all the time. And would you, would you say that was kind of the turning point when you were like, okay, enough of this in store stuff? I'm, I'm gonna still doing the in store. Okay, well, I had no choice. Yeah, I, mean, I was still doing it. But I, I mean, but you started like, to merge toward. I, there has to be another avenue. That's when that's when I realized that this model is just it is not it's not scalable at any. Like I said, yeah. Okay, so now you go into where you're selling the cards, right? That's when I started to be like, okay, is it possible? Mm -hmm. Is it possible for me to make any money being a plastic spender? Because you know you have to come up with a business model. You know what I mean? You have to you have to figure out what what people are willing to pay. You have to know the market, and you have to know, you know, I mean, who your your target demographic is. So it's like you have to look at all these things, and you have to think, okay, is there any money to be made here? Is can I invest? What's my ROI on this whole situation? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and and when I looked at, it, I was like, okay, maybe I could do this instead of doing the in-store carding and supplement, um, you know, by just by like buying groceries and paying for gas and like all my like, immediately daily needs, I could just swipe on credit cards instead of. Because I don't need cash for all that shit because I got credit cards. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, I can go ahead and I can just maybe sell the cards online instead of having to do the online in-store carding because I still have to pay rent in cash. You know what I mean? I still have to pay my car payment in cash. You know what I mean? So I still need cash for things. So I still needed some kind of cash in cash inflow coming in, you know? Okay, so when you do all your research, what what was your – like I, I would just call it like a, almost like a hypothesis. So when you're done doing your research, what was your you know hypothesis – conclusion mm -hmm. of is this scalable is this doable the demographics how am i going to do this what what did you what what plan did you come up with of this is how i'm going to make this work after doing all this research mm -hmm. and and that's interesting that you bring that up because nobody would think that you know you actually would sit there and really look at it just like any other business you know you have to yeah yeah, yeah i mean you have to yeah so, so like what was your plan then after you did all your research you studied it this that the other what what was my plan was to put out a better product than all of the other assholes that were selling selling plastic so what i did is i went ahead and i, I purchased plastic from every single plastic vendor i could find online you know all the reliable ones anyway and then i got i got all of their shit and i looked at I dissected each, each one and i could tell what kind of printer each person was using 
and I could tell what kind of ink they were using. I could tell what kind of if their hollows were stickers or if they were heat pressed. Like I could I could dissect it and I can knew who was doing what. So my plan was to make a better product first of all than all the competition, because just that alone is gonna is gonna allow me to excel. Okay, not only that, I'm gonna put it out. I'm gonna put out a better product, but I'm gonna put it out at a better price. You know what I mean? I'm gonna mm-hmm. give you a better product at a better price. And not only that, I'm going to be reliable. I'm going to answer your fucking ICQ chats at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to answer all of your emails. If you get any declines, I'm willing to send out, you know what I mean? I'm willing to replace cards that, you know what I mean, are fucked up if you have any problems. Like, customer service was my number one thing. Like, Mm -hmm. I was all about customer service. You know what I mean? And I think that's what really put me ahead of everybody else. So it was like the Machiavellian model. Always available, right? I'm not aware of the Machiavellian model. Oh, you got to read Machiavelli. It's called yeah. McAvoy the in Prince. In prison, all them guys tried yeah. to get me to read that. No, the for... Art of War. And I'm just like, come yeah. on. Now you got to read McAvoy the That's Prince. That's like the cliche, go to prison and read Yeah, pe- Yeah, people say it, but, uh, but actually yeah, every big businessman is right. Okay. Jo- Steve yeah. Jobs, okay. Bill Gates, who's a jerk off. But, you know, a, yeah. a bunch, yeah, it's it's like kind of, you can, you can take McAvoy and it's the Prince. And you can incorporate that in, in business. And basically what you just explained is the Machiavelli okay. model. Okay, so you do your research and you say, look, this is what's going to separate me from everybody else. Yeah. This and is what's going to allow me to beat the competition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what you got to, you got to compete. That's, this, this is the market I'm trying to break into. You have to look at your competition. You have to look at exactly what they're doing and you have to do it better. That's, yeah, I, that's awesome. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's work. And then you figure out, and like you said, you got all the top guy stuff, and you say, okay, I know what he used here, I know what he used here, mm-hmm. and this is, I'm going to beat him, him, and start checking them off yep. of, of how you're going to make yours better than all theirs. And, and, listen, and most of these guys were full of shit. Like yeah. most of these guys, you would order cards from them, and it would take forever for them to respond, or for you to get your fucking cards if you even got them. Get alone if they work. Right, and then, yeah, that's, and there's a whole other, you know, thing you got to deal with. Now... When you're doing that, were you able to maintain any type of uh, relationship? Um, yeah, or, I was with. Um, like, I mean, like a stable relationship, or was it was like a, a year, hidden? I was quit? in a two-year steady relationship, um, all the way up until almost like when I got caught. So yeah, I met I met this uh, I met this girl named Melissa in. I want to say 2007. Had it been 2007, and then you know my son was born in uh, 2008. And I went to prison in 2000. I got picked up. I got caught in 2009. I got busted. In 2000. I didn't go to prison in 2009, but I got got caught by Secret Service in 2009. So we were together from about 2000 and, uh, 2007 to 2000. It's about two years then. Yeah, about two years we were together. And uh, we had my son, Nicholas. So, yeah, I was in a, a steady relationship the whole time. So so even when you started making a bu- like a lot of money selling the cards, you weren't just running around with every girl that you saw. You no, no, you were no, no, able no. to have an actual relationship. No, I had a normal life. Yeah. By all accounts. Yeah. I was, you know, I, you know, took care of my son during the day and, you know, my wife, my, not my wife, my girl, she would go to, she would go to work and, you know, I'd be in the room printing cards and have my son in the room with me while I'm doing fucking, you know, all my shit. You know, all the ones that came out fucked up with, I'd throw in a pile on the floor and he'd sit there and play with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was just my life. It was normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now at this time when you are making the money, are are you laying low? Cause now now you're now you're selling them, so now you got cash flow. I, well, what were they using then to pay you? Uh, mostly uh, Bitcoin. Um, back then there was some shit called uh, LMZ, like Liberty, yeah. Liberty um, Reserve, and then there was something else called WMZ, which was web monies. Uh, uh, FBI ended up shutting them all down. Oh yeah, I never yeah. even heard of WMZ. Yeah, that's 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 kind of like a, a, a underground. Well, I don't know if it was really underground. It was pretty wide, but yeah, WMZ and then there's Liberty Reserve and there was Bitcoin and there was Western Union as well. So, yeah, yeah. And I had Western. I had prepaid Western Union. Uh, like so, what I was set up a, a set up like an account with Western Union and they send you a, a debit card. You know, you got to verify a bunch of information, but they send you a debit card and they allow people to. I don't know if they do it anymore, but they allowed people to send Western Unions directly to your card from a location. So if they went to a Western Union location, they were like, okay, I want to send a location to Western Union, we'll go straight to your debit card. You wouldn't have to go pick it up. So you wouldn't even have to go pick it up in person. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So now at this time, how, how deep, how, how far are you into the, what'd you call it? Selling plastics? Is that like? Plastics vendor. Plastics vendor. Okay. So how far are you into that at this point? Um, I was doing all right. You know what I mean? I was doing maybe one or two orders a month or something like that. Yeah, and then so what do you make on an order? A thousand dollars. A thousand dollar minimum order mm-hmm. was uh, it was a hundred debit cards, blank or embossed, 
and then I would whatever I would work with you on like whatever you want driver's licenses to match or whatever like that. I would do all the driver's licenses, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and stuff like that for you. Oh, it's like a thousand dollar minimum order, yeah. So you were sending the whole package. So you would get the car, driver's license, everything. Yeah. Wow, yeah, really? Look it up. Damn. Send me a band. I'm gonna send you a hundred cars and driver's licenses and the whole thing, so you can just go right out and start committing fraud. Wow. So for a thousand dollars, you could get at that time. You yeah, know, you time. could get a hundred driver's licenses and a hundred cars. I wouldn't do a hundred driver's licenses. Okay. Because the holograms for the driver's licenses were kind of expensive. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I, I, I would work with you on the driver's licenses. I would do like maybe like five or like maybe like 10. You know what I mean? All in different names. And then I would, the hundred cards, like if I would just split all the names from the, from the, from the IDs, I would divide them evenly through the debit cards so that each ID would get so many debit cards. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you, you can't be a dummy doing that. that. That's, that takes intelligence. That's what people say. <laughs> John, you're yeah. a smart dude, man. Yeah. It don't matter how you, you know, there's no two ways to turn. You're a smart dude to be able to pull that off. I mean, I just didn't want to I, have a regular I, job. So. What, what, it, I, I mean, I know I, it's illegal and, you know, we all make mistakes, but just what, what, it, what has impressed me so far the most is not the money, is the research that you did mm -hmm. of how you were going to separate yourself from, from everybody My else. business model. Your business, yeah, your business yeah. model. I had that, a killer business that, model. That, 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 impressed, that impresses me more than any of this. You know what I mean? Because money's money. We both sure. know money comes and goes. Sure. But that really impresses me that you did all that research. And, I mean, you really took it like a, you know, like a fucking, you know, Fortune 500 company that you're going to build. I yeah. mean, I mean that's, that's sick. So that, now you're a plastics vendor. Okay, so like at the peak, what were you making a week? Oh, it really wasn't weekly. Like I, like I said, I would do maybe. <clears throat> or was it more of like a monthly type of thing? I would do maybe one or two orders a month. I was oh. making at this point. I was making maybe like a grand, two grand a month. Yeah, at this point. But then it it gets higher and higher. I my name starts getting out there, and I start getting more orders. Reputation. Yeah, yeah, and I and I distinctly remember the morning I woke up and I had twenty. I had twenty orders waiting for me, ready to go. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Cause at that up until that point, I think that's probably the most amount of money I'd ever seen at one time. That's twenty k. Twenty grand, twenty grand, yeah. I had never, I had never seen any kind of money like that before, and not at one time. Like I've, I've had, you know, tons of money, like three thousand here, two thousand, never like a chunk of change all at once like that. that now, was cool. in, now on that twenty k, what's your net? What do you mean? Well, okay, so they sent you twenty k, mm -hmm. right? Now you got to make everything, you got to buy the plastic, There's get the numbers. Almost zero overhead. Overheads really? maybe less than a thousand bucks, and that's now correct me if I'm and, wrong. And I can go, I can, and I can, and I can get five thousand blank cards. Well, I can get five hundred blank cards. I can get um, all the ink I need for my printer. I can get all of that for less than three hundred bucks, four hundred bucks. Wow. So, like, correct me if I'm wrong. So, what I'm gathering is the most expensive thing is the, the numbers, actu the, the actual physical, the equipment that you have to buy, like the initial investment for decent equipment to be able to make. A, a good product is it's it's up there. You're gonna have to invest at least twelve, twelve or thirteen to have it all yeah. all right. Okay, so now you get to twenty k, right? Mm -hmm. What's your how much do you make on that? Forget about the equipment, just that twenty k, because you got to get the card numbers, right? You have to buy the card numbers to print on the cards. Well, see, here's the thing. I, either if they sometimes they wanted them, sometimes they didn't. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? If they wanted them, I can get them for them. And 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 sometimes I would just plug them in with my my my. Um, it was called a uh, my dumps vendor. Okay. So I knew other guys that I would you know work with. Like so, my dumps vendors would call me or hit me up sometimes and be like, "Listen, I need a hundred cards." You know what I mean? On face, and I'd just send them a hundred because I know if I called them, listen, I need fucking five hundred dumps now. And I would have them in my email before I even finished asking for them. You know what I mean? So I would shoot them business all the time. Like if somebody came to me for cards and they they, they needed dumps too, I would send them to my dumps vendor. So then it was all like a, a, I see. a secular. So it's pretty much a like a brotherly kind of business well, with that. you know, there's no honor amongst thieves. Yeah, right. So the guy you've been dealing with for, you know, five yeah. months can rob you tomorrow. Right. You know what I mean? Like, But at the same time, they'll help you out and you help them out. Yeah, it, well, it's touch and go. It's touch and go? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah, it? yeah. Every so, every deal, you don't know if you're going to get robbed or not. <laughs> every deal, it comes down to that. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, you don't know if they're going to take your money, and you don't know if you're going to get what you asked for. So on that 20, you're making pretty much... It's all profit. Nineteen five on it, right? Well, yeah, I didn't even look at it like that, because I could... I, off that 20, and I could make just, you know, I could do probably... Off a, off a $1,000 investment, I could probably fulfill... 
I'm doing the numbers in my head real quick. Yeah. Um, I could probably fill 200 orders. So off $1,000, I can make $200,000. So, yeah, this, it's, it's nothing. It was a game. It was wow. a joke. Like, it was, it was zero overhead, like I said. It was like a z- virtually zero overhead. Wow. I, and I listen, know. mind you, if you tried to do all this now, it wouldn't work. Oh, yeah. You know, they've changed everything because of the massive, you know, I, I, I don't, I'd like to see myself as one of the early pioneers of this whole thing because I got in in the golden age. You know what I mean? When there was really no verification process for a lot of shit. Like, people just weren't expecting shit. You know what I mean? Like, there wasn't, like, kids aren't, weren't doing it. Like, now kids are doing it. Everybody's going to Target and Walmart, stolen credit card. You hear about it in the news. Like, it was just unheard of. Like, nobody knew it was going on. So, in other words, everybody that hates the chip in their car, they can say, thanks, John. I I ruined it for everybody. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you get the 20K order, and then it just – you start blowing up from there? No, not really. Uh, It was, like, maybe, like, another six or seven months before I I seen another uh, substantial um, order like that. Yeah. So, and then, eventually, I got plugged in with – you know, one of the guys I had been dealing with on the forums, he was – his name was Shoulder Surfer. And, and, you know, he, I don't know what he was into. I mean, apparently he was plugged in with the Russian mob. And once I got plugged in with him, that's when it just went. It was like getting in, it was like strapping myself into one of those fucking Tesla rockets. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of money was coming in at that point? I was doing a hundred orders a month for him. Damn. A hundred K. Yeah. Yeah. All profit. No, that wasn't every month. Right. You know what I mean? But there was, I remember two or three consecutive months where I had a hundred, at least a hundred orders just from him. Right. Yeah. And and you got to be shitting your pants at this time. Well, now I'm like I'm going to prison. Okay. So now, now you're at starting this point, to get I'm like, and I'm getting scared because you know what I mean. I was just gonna ask you. So now at this I'm point, fucking, I'm terrified at this point. So now it's taking a mental toll in your ass yeah. at yeah. this point. Now, <clears throat> are you in any type of relationship, or you're just running around at this point? No, I'm still with. Oh, you're still with, I'm still uh, with, with Melissa. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can she tell that you're a little stressed out? Yeah. You know, I did a good job of hiding a lot from her. Mm-hmm. Like she, I don't, she, I don't think she ever really knew exactly what I was doing or how much money I was making or, or, or exactly what I had going on at this point. I mean, I, she knew obviously what I was doing cause she would watch me print the cards. You know what I mean? But yeah, she didn't really have any clue. She didn't know like the extent of the operation. No, she had no idea. All she knew is our rent was getting paid every month. The baby had diapers. The baby had milk. Our groceries were always full. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we were doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, now you're now you're kind of hitting the big leagues. Yeah. Now, how long does that go on? Not very long. No. No, it didn't last very long. Before I before I end up getting before the whole the card the house of cards came down. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't last very long. Maybe this was this is like I said, 2007, 2008. So about two years. So about maybe a year. I did. I had a solid year, a good year run where I was, you know. Really making money, like really making money. Okay, so now take me through when the House of Cards came down. Right, so I'm dealing with this guy in Mexico, and I don't know if he had anything to do with it or or whatever, but I I was dealing with him for a while, and he had he had sent me, I was sending him cards, and um, he was sending me you know other stuff. I had other shit going on. He was he was sending me other shit, so I you know he sent me a package, and I knew I had a package coming, and um. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. I go to uh, I go to the UPS store because now, mind you, I'm in South Carolina at this point. I had moved from uh, Southern Florida to this small little town uh, called Rock Hill, South Carolina, and in 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 South Florida, there's probably I don't know ten thousand UPS stores. You know what I mean? Like if you put a GPS in your UPS store and you get you can get a hundred of them within a five mile radius. So I would I never really had to go to the same UPS store twice. To drop off my to drop off my packages just to get shipped out, so it was never really any cause for concern for me. But when I get to Rock Hill, South Carolina, there's two UPS stores. Really? Yeah. And what do I do? Because all my packages have to go international. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? Do I drive fucking three hours to Columbia, South Carolina, once a week to drop my to ship my packages out? I need to ship shit out every day. Like, I need this money coming in. I need this, I need these packages going out every day, not once a week. You know what I mean? It's where I got to make a fucking long ass trip all the way out to either Columbia, South Carolina, or one of the bigger cities. Now, was there a reason why you used UPS versus USPS or FedEx? I just had the best success rate with UPS. Okay. Like getting things through customs and getting things to yeah. like Northern Europe and like a lot of shit to like uh, Chile and Brazil and a lot of other places I was mm. sending shit. 
I just had the best. Like FedEx almost always got fucked up in customs. Did it really? Yeah. Like I think out of the ten, I think only used FedEx like ten times, and out of those ten times, four of them got hit. Ne- never DHL. I didn't use DHL <laughs> because there was no DHL in South Carolina. I mean, we're in a little hick town. Oh, fuck. There's UPS. Yeah. Or the USPS. Yeah. And USPS is. Oh, no, forget about uh, it. Forget uh, about uh, it. Yeah, that that ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, that's a joke. So you're stuck in South Carolina with two UPS stores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had to go to the same UPS store, basically the one in my little town, to send out my to send out my packages. And the old man um, that worked there, unbeknownst to me, was the owner, because they're a franchise. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And apparently he just became suspicious, and decided to open up one of my packages one day and and and, and you know investigate. And he can legally do that? No, no. You know, but that I'll tell you about that later on. Okay, that, yeah, that factors into my sentencing and yeah. shit later on down the line. Yeah. So what happened was he found, he found the, the obviously he found the cards and um, he called the postmaster general. The postmaster general contacted the secret service and the secret service came down to the UPS store and they sent me an email saying I had a package, which I did, which just coincidentally I had a package and I show up to pick up my package. I signed for it. The old man played it fucking cool as ice. I'll get. I got to give it to him. You know, hats off to that old fucking bastard. He played it cool as ice because I, I couldn't. I can usually tell when somebody's nervous or something's not right. Yeah. Nah. Now, no now, clue. John, what do you think made him suspicious of the package? I have no idea. I mean, they were I taped mean, right. I mean, maybe the frequency uh, with which I was sending them out. Uh, maybe because they were going all over the world. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, t- I told him that I had a uh, a business um, selling refurbished electronics, uh, like on eBay. You know what I mean? And I did. I actually had a, like a legit company that I set up so that I could mail out shit with like, because when you send something overseas, you have to have, you have to include an invoice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I created a fictitious company, you know, that I sold um, uh, refurbished electronics on eBay and I would buy broken electronics on eBay. You know what I mean? I had a pile of them sitting in the corner of my room because that's what I would put the cards in and I would come up with, I'd have, a, I'd have an invoice for them. And I had the company header, the company logo, a uh, website that I built for the company. I had, you know, everything. The phone number you could call was a legit number you could call. I had a uh, um, what's called a HQ set up, like a virtual HQ where you can set up like a virtual office where they answer phones for you. you they, they can accept your mail. So it's kind of like a, like today, like they have re- Regis virtual offices? Yes. So it was something like yeah, that. Yeah, I had one of those set up for the company. So if you actually called, somebody would answer the phone and all that shit. So, yeah, so when my shit was going through customs, I had to have that – that invoice for customs, you know what I mean? So my packages would just sail right through. So you were taking the cards, putting them in electronics. Yeah. And then shipping them off as yeah. if you're an eBay company. Yes, exactly. Uh, were you using a, uh, you know, like when you ship something from eBay, it will have that eBay symbol on it? Well, yeah, I would print I would print all my, uh, I had uh, something called, uh, I don't remember what postage system I was using, but I could pay for my own UPS labels. Mm-hmm. So I could print my own UPS labels with the little eBay symbol up there. That's and what, I would yeah. put it right on the box. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah I would that just, makes it look legit I would just take shit. it to the UPS store, pay like a $5 fee, and they would just put it in their outgoing mail. Wow, yeah. You know? Yeah, but that eBay, that, that probably bought you a lot of time too. Yeah. Having that symbol on there. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they're not going to bat an eyelash. It's not a suspicious package. Because that's what you have to make your package seem like it's just another legit piece of mail. Yeah. And they get thousands of them through. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't catch, if it doesn't catch their eye, if it's just another piece of email mail coming through, okay, eBay, blah, 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 it just goes. Yeah. And they could even scan it. They can even send it through the scanner and it's just electronic equipment. Yeah. That's why I was just asking how you They could put the dogs on it and they could sniff the shit out of it. What are they going to sniff? Plastic? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just trying to think what would make this dude uh, open up. You know I was I, young. I had a nice car. I was, you know, mailing packages out every other day. I, I don't know. I don't know. He was just an old fucking bitch that didn't want to mind his own goddamn business. Maybe he thought I was selling, sending drugs. Yeah. I think that's what he thought it was. I mean, in my brain, I was like, okay, he probably thought I was peddling drugs out of his fucking UPS store. And he right. didn't want to be a part of that. Plus, all the international pro- didn't make it look any better either, right? Mm. So it was probably... You're, you're a young kid. You're sent a bunch of packages. Maybe you didn't like the way you walked or talked or who the hell yeah, knows. Yeah. And then there's a pile of shit going all over the country or all over the world. The world I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. And he gets a little nosy up his ass and opens up the package illegally, which we'll get to. And and then uh, they they call you up to come pick up a package. And then uh, how that I signed go? for the package. And, oh. uh, I'm like, okay, everything's cool. He played, like I said, he played. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I'm going to walk out the door. I push Dirty open the motherfucker. door. And here comes two people. And I didn't see, because I don't look up because they were kind of tall. All I seen were badges. 
Mm-hmm. And they were like, Ryan Pearson? They looked right at me and I said, Ryan Pearson? Because that's the name that I was you know, using at that time. And I was like, yeah. And they are like, uh, well, we need to talk to you about what you've been sending out of here. I was like, what do you mean, sending out of here? I try to play stupid, you know, in the beginning. And uh, they are like, you know what, just, just come in the back and talk to us. Just come in the back. I'm like, all right. So I go in the back and, uh, you know, they start asking me, like, okay, we know what you've been sending out of here. We got one of your packages. We intercepted one of your packages. Now, I didn't know the old man went, I didn't know any of that shit. I thought, you know, this is what they were telling me. They said, oh, we've intercepted one of your packages. So we know what you've been sending out of here. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, fuck. Are you thinking run? Or what are you thinking at this time? At this, at this point in time, I'm like, okay, what do they have? You know what I mean? Like, how much do they know? Because obviously, if they knew the full extent, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'd be in fucking handcuffs. Right. So obviously, they didn't know shit. All they, all they, inter- all they got was one package going out. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, what do they know? So you're kind of feeling. I'll give them what they time. know. I'll play. I'll play their game and kind of give them what I kind of feel like they think that I don't know that they know that I know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck. All right, yeah. I've been, I've been, you know, making printing credit cards and, and selling them on the internet is what I told them. And they're like, okay, how long have you been doing it? And I says, I don't know, only about six months, six or seven months, because I since I've been there in South Carolina, because they didn't know any of my past previous to South Carolina. I'd only been in South Carolina like maybe like six months or something like that, you know? That's why I said six months. I've been doing it six months. And and keep in mind, they think that you're Ryan Pearson. Ryan Pearson, because they don't know my real name at this point. Okay, so they're good. like, okay, well, what's your name? And I had my ID on me, so I had to give it to them. And I gave my ID, and then they, they were on, the, on their Blackberries and on the phone and doing this and doing that. And they were like, um, you know, and they just proceeded to interrogate me. Like, how long you been doing it? Like, do you have an office? Do you have any storage units? Like, where where, where are you printing these cards at? I said, out of my condo. And they were like, well. And I'm like, I'm like, and then before I, and then I was like, okay, we're having, we're having a good conversation here. And in my head, I'm like, and then I just stopped. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I going to jail? Am I being arrested right now? And they're like, well, for right now, if you just, you're not being arrested. You're not going to jail. I'm like, am I going to jail? You know what I mean? And he's like, listen, if you just play ball with us, you're probably not going to go to jail today. And I was like, yeah, that's some bullshit. And I sat back in my chair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's some bullshit. And he's like, listen, he's like, right now we have a package and we have a hundred cards in it, a hundred blank uh, visa cards in it right now. He's like, I could take you to jail. You know what I mean? Or you could cooperate with us and we see if we can work something out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, well, let me see how much I can minimize this whole situation and fucking play it down. And let me see if I can just, I know I'm in trouble. I'm fucked already. I know I'm kind of fucked. I know I'm kind of fucked, but I'm not fucked fucked. You know what I mean? Because like, if they really knew the full extent, I'd be. You, you, would, have, you, would, have, you yeah. would have 20 agents. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me go ahead and just play ball here a little bit and see what kind of deal I can get. You know, so they're like, okay, well, I had to sign some papers saying, uh, you know, we can come to your home and search and we can, we can seize anything that, you know, was used to make fraudulent credit cards and all that shit like that. I'm like, okay, that, that's fine. Because in my brain, I'm like, okay, I have a storage unit. And I have a car in my storage unit, and that's where I keep all of my my, my big like amounts of cash and shit because I had to hide all that shit from Melissa. You know what I mean? I couldn't I couldn't have her know like the full full extent of what I was doing. You know what I mean? So I had I had things hidden from her and everybody. And I was like, okay, all I have in my condo is my equipment. All I have is my printers. All I have is my embossers. I got all my equipment. I'll give them that because I can always get more equipment or whatever. As long as I don't go to fucking jail today, I'll give them all that. You know, so yeah, well, they came to my home and um, I I went ahead and I let them search and luckily Melissa wasn't home. She was at her mom's house with the kid and I called her on the phone. I was like, listen, the secret service are here. They're fucking ransacking the apartment. Don't come home. You know, Did they tear the house up. Uh, I mean, they didn't. They were respectful. Like the two dudes were actually like, I'm gonna give them credit. Like the two dudes that that were kind of like busted me were were cool dudes. You know what I mean? I had fucking like 300 pairs of sneakers in the room, and the dude kept coming back out like, man, I really fucking dig your sneakers. Do you know what I mean? Like, he was a fucking sneakerhead. You know what I yeah, mean? He's like, yeah. dude, he's fucking, you got some fucking fire in there. I'm like, yeah. I got all the fire in there, sir. And then, um, but yeah. Well, so, I probably thought, you know what? This guy's in a, a jerk off. You're not, you know, selling yeah. crack to kids, and, no, yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. doing what you're doing. But, dude, I'm just a kid printing cl- yeah. credit cards in my closet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they were being cool. And, um, dude, I had guns in the house, you know? I had, but I had my concealed weapons license at this point. But I had a house full of guns. You know what I mean? Did they seize those? No. They left them there. And I had weed. They're like, do you have any guns or drugs in the house? I was like, yeah, I got both. You know what I mean? Like, how much and what do you have? And I told them, like, you know, this is where the guns are. They're in my room. They're in my safe. They're locked up. 
I mean, I, you know, I have a kid, you know, I'll just leave fucking firearms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Around the house. Responsible father. So, yeah, they were locked in the safe in my room and I told them and I, I, they took my safe. They took, um, they left the guns. They didn't take my guns. Um, I had a bunch of weed at the house. They didn't take the weed either. They left my weed there. You know, they just wanted the credit cards and they wanted like anything with removable storage they took, you know, so all the hard drives, all the cell phones. I mean, at this time we were still using digital cameras because all the cell phones didn't have cameras on them. You know what I mean? So they took the digital cameras. They took all the SD cards. They took all the printers, the embossers. Yeah. Now, when they took the <clears throat> the hard drives, was there enough on there where they, like, did you know that when they got them that they were going to realize that this just wasn't a one-time thing? Yeah. Yeah. So they search you and then they, I assume they let you go. They didn't arrest me. They just took everything and dipped. And, and they left me a business card, and he's like, listen, I need you to be at this address on this date. Courthouse? Uh, it was the Secret Service headquarters in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 So I showed up. It was like two weeks or something like that. You did show up. Yeah, I showed up. It's like, fuck it. Let's do it. He's like, if you don't show up, you're going to have a warrant out for your arrest. So I, I, I went. You know what I mean? I, but I knew I thought I was going to jail. So in this, in this two weeks, I'm trying to get all my affairs in order because I, I'm in my mind, I'm going to jail when I show up to this fucking Secret Service building. Um, but no, I, I showed up, and... You know, I walk into this room and there's this fucking long table in the middle of the room and there's all these dudes sitting around the table. And in the middle of the table, they got all these screenshots spread out of all the Carter forums. They've got <laughs> my fucking posts on the Carter your, forums. They, and they got it all off the hard drive? Well, I had to give them all my passwords. I had to tell them what forums I was on. Uh, I had to give them all my passwords, all my logins. I had to give them everything. Mm-hmm. That was part of the deal. Like, I had to give up everything. That was part of the deal for you to walk. Yeah. Yeah, I had to give up all my logins, everybody I'd been communicating with, I mean, which were just random screen names, you know. So it's like, oh, here, take them. You're going to get them anyway. You got all my logins, you know. So you go in there, you show up, they got all the screens there. What do you, what do you think, 20 people were sitting there staring at you? I don't know if it was that many, but there was <laughs> but quite a like, few. It yeah, felt like they that, They were, like, right? older guys. Yeah, yeah. So you can tell, like, they probably had flown people in from, like, D.C. Mm-hmm. and fucking Las Vegas. Like, all the crime center the hubs i they probably flew dudes in because that's why they wanted me to wait the two weeks because they had to probably schedule me to get all these fucking dudes in to see what i knew who i knew what i was doing what i wasn't doing dude and they fucking tore me apart for like three and a half hours just interrogated the fuck out of me i mean i was looking at pictures of russian crazy russian looking motherfuckers do you know him do you have you dealt with him uh how much do you know like are you do you speak russian are you a hacker do you code like all this shit you know they grilled me so you were there about three and a half hours. I was hours. there about three and a half hours. <clears throat> Probably felt like twenty. Yeah, yeah. And then at the end, at the end of which they were, they were just like, um, "We'll be in touch." <laughs> and you're probably like, "What?" <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll be in touch. I was like, "All right," and I just walked out. But in your mind, you got to be like, "Huh?" Yeah, couldn't believe it. Right. Okay. So you walk out. I didn't ask no questions. <laughs> yeah, probably. I, 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 they're like, "Do you have any questions?" Or I was like, "So you guys are gonna." call me or like send something to me in the mail or they're like yeah you'll have a court date he's like you're gonna have a court date i'm like all right and i was like i didn't ask any questions after that i just did an about face and fucking you know swiftly exited the fucking building (laughs) right and then what happened after that you know uh melissa left me okay yeah when all that shit popped off she was like this is it it's a wrap you know so i uh i think i took off to michigan and I grabbed, you know, all everything I had left, you know, whatever I had left. I don't remember how much money I had at that point in time. Um, I just, you know, took it all and, and dipped out and went to Michigan and hung out, you know, with family that I hadn't seen for a while. And yeah. And did you stop the the, the fraud or for a little while I did? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. This was kind of like a, a wake up thing, and you know, now you just lost your girl. Because well, I'm waiting. Yeah, you're, you're waiting for something to pop. Yeah, I'm waiting for, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have a court date, and then just nothing happened. Nothing happened. A year went by and nothing happened. Two years went by and nothing happened. You don't hear anything. Nothing. I got away scot free. I'm fucking. You know what I mean. In my mind, I'm like, fuck. I didn't. I I fucking pulled the wool over all these motherfuckers' eyes and I got away scot free. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How did that theory turn out? It wasn't correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was incorrect. Okay, so you go back to Michigan. You hang out with family for a while. I'm partying. I meet a girl. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm kind of doing i started started kind of doing carding again i'm not selling cards online but you know what i mean i'm using them in the stores because i'm not once again i'm not getting a real fucking job and i had money you know what i mean but it's just like okay i'm getting back into the carding a little bit because it's the only thing i knew and it was my hobby at this point in time i mean i was doing art and I'm, i've been tattooing for you know a long time and all that stuff but like this is what i just like to do you know and i was like okay well i'm just gonna do a little bit of carding i met a girl 
And she turned out to be a complete fucking psychopath and started blackmailing me. Mm. And then I had to fucking leave Michigan because, like, this bunch of crazy fucking shit happened with her. And it was just, like, it was too much. You know what I mean? Like, I'm on, I, in my mind, I'm on the run. Yeah. Because I don't know if I got a warrant. Like, I'm like, I haven't heard anything, but I might have a warrant. I might not. Like, who the fuck knows? How was she trying to blackmail you? Well, she knew what I was doing. Oh. And she's like, oh, I'm going to tell, pretty much, tell on you. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure she benefited from what you were doing, right? Of course. Yeah. They all do. Mm -hmm. You know, the nail appointments, the fucking oh. hair, yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. yeah. So it was, a, it was okay then, right? Of course. But yeah. then you get in a little bit of a, a yeah. fight or a banger. A little and tiff. That, yeah. yeah, a little tiff. Now all of a sudden they're going to the FBI. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but she's not saying that on the way to the nail salon or the, the, yeah, the hair we're places. we're fucking partying and we're fucking yeah. drinking everything yeah. and we're eating everything. And I'm sure she's not drinking... Uh, Schmear off. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only the best. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can. I'm sure you've been down that oh, road. It sounds yeah. like you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. You, you're doing whatever you're doing. They're getting their hair. They're getting their nails. They're going into Chanel, Louis. Everything's fine then, but shit. Something doesn't go their way. Boom. I guess now it's not okay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you're worried about her. Bla blackmail yeah, so I'm like now you don't like, know what's go. going on in South Carolina yeah you're in the dark yeah. so now you gotta you gotta got jet go. from I go back Michigan. to Miami you go back to Miami Miami's the only thing I know right like that's where I'm comfortable that's my home you know what I mean that's just where I, I feel at home out of anywhere I've and ever been and it's busy there's a lot of people there's a lot going on you blend in yeah, 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 yeah. a lot I mean, better there yeah. Yeah. I'm just another white boy in the breeze yeah as far as anybody else is concerned right yeah so now what happens in Miami <gasps> oh I just go crazy I start doing cocaine, hanging out at Scarlet's Cabaret, you know what I mean? Eating, I start going to raves, I start fucking doing cocaine and just, I you know, fell in with a bunch of Euro trash and fucking big muscle dummies. And yeah, I went on like a two year. Like bender? A, yeah, pretty much. Just like two years where I was just out there, just yeah. blowing money. Everything I had was almost gone. Now are you selling, are you a plastics vendor again? No. No, I'm just living off of what I got in the bank. I don't have any, at this point I have no equipment. Oh, so you have no income. No, I have nothing. I'm just living off of the money that I had, you know what I mean, put away, which is which wasn't that much. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like, you know, so two years of just flying private and fucking going to the strip clubs and buying bottles, you know what I mean, and just wiling straight the fuck out as hard as I can. It takes a fucking, not only does it take a financial toll on you, but it just takes a fucking mental toll. Now, do you there was there was some parts of my then those times those two years where I thought I had lost my mind. You yeah, know what I mean, like where I just didn't think I was coming back. Well, I mean, think about it. You lose your girl, you know, Melissa. She has your son, right? Yeah. So you're dealing with that. Yeah. You have to run from family at home because this brawl is ready to blackmail you. Yeah. So you don't know what's going on in South Carolina. I have no idea what they're. I doing. mean, that's a hell of a lot of stress to be walking around with. Yeah. Now you're in Miami, which is certainly not the place to be if you are trying to. It's the, not the most conducive environment to somebody who's trying to straighten their life out. Yeah, if you're trying to straighten out and you have a lot of stress and yeah. a lot of emotional yeah. stress, and you know you have a lot of worries and anxiety, that is probably not a good place to go. If uh, <laughs> you know you're trying to stay healthy, yeah. you should say. Yeah, it's not. So you go on a nice two-year bender. Yeah. You know, drinking, drugging, whatever, yeah. girls, wild. whatever, wilding out wild. as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, probably just to numb yourself from what reality yeah, listen, is. In, in a my way, brain, right? I'm going to prison for 20 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're just trying to numb it, kind of. So, you know, of. I guess what? I'm going to have a good fucking time. I'm going to have a good time, yeah. and I'm going to go and do my time, and I'm going to get out, and I'm going to go straight. Yeah. You know? That was kind of like the half ass plan I had concocted. Right. No, I, yeah. I understand that because you're, you're thinking, look. I'm screwed. I'm going yeah. away. So I might as well just live it up because. Yep. So now I'm doing all the cocaine. Yeah. And I'm fucking all the strippers and I'm right. doing everything I've ever wanted to do because I've been in a relationship for the past couple of years. And before that, I, I never really had a lot of money. So, you know what I mean? I couldn't really be like the playboy that I wanted to be or whatever. You know, I couldn't live that lifestyle. You know what I mean? Because I just, you know. And as you're doing it. Champagne. Uh, what do they say? Champagne uh, uh, wishes with beer. Yeah. With, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With beer money. So it's and, just like. And you don't know. And tomorrow could be the day. Right. You could wake I could get picked up tomorrow. I could wake up to the marshals kicking my fucking door in tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So tomorrow could be the day. So what the hell? You live every day like it's your last. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of mentality. Yeah. Yeah. And and the feds are just letting you hang by. Uh, you know, they're just letting you hang yourself. Yeah. So uh, one of the dudes that was on my case got reassigned to DC, and then like so my shit just sat on a, a shelf somewhere, and I guess they forgot about it for like three fucking years. 
Unfucking real. Yeah. So now you go in this bender for two years in Miami. Mm-hmm. Then what? Um, I meet my wife that I'm currently married to now. Okay. Yeah. I met her, and uh, that's when I just decided to not do drugs anymore and not be wild and crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so still she, doing fraud. So she snapped you out of the whole bender thing. She made me want to stop being wild. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I, cause she was kind of younger than me, and I seen, like, she had, like, an innocence to her. And I didn't want to expose her to that, to all of that dark shit. I mean, she eventually got into it later down the road. You know, not by my doing. But on her own. On her own. But, like, I didn't want to introduce her to that early on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she was, like, a super cool chick. And at this point, I knew I had to start doing something different. Because, like I said, I was... I thought I was, I, there was certain points in my in, in my life when I was doing that shit where I didn't think I was coming back mentally. You know what I mean? Just fucking out there, just screaming at people on the street like crazy. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Yeah. You know, being all fucked up on drugs. And so, yeah, you know, I, I knew I was smart enough to know that I had to change. Like something had to change or I was going to die. I was going to die or I was going to be live a miserable life and then go to prison. So Yeah, you didn't want that. Yeah, I knew changes had to be made. And she just came along at the right time. Mm-hmm. So I looked at that as a sign. Like, okay, maybe this is my escape. You know what I mean? Maybe this is, I can take a break. See, not a lot, not a lot of people are intelligent enough to, to grasp that and say, hey, look, you know, may, maybe this is the sign to, okay, John, enough is enough with this crazy shit. Mm-hmm. I've done it. You did it. You flew private. We got the bottles. We did this. Yeah. Okay, let's, yeah. enough is enough. Or I'm going to be a nutcase. Or vegetable, or dead. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's where you're at. I mean, I'm watching people OD. I'm watching people yeah. go to jail. You know, I mean, just all the shit that comes. And along this is like 08. What's that? This is 08, about 2008. Yeah. Okay. So now you meet her. You calm down. Now you're still doing your fraud, but you're done with the whole party scene. No, no, no. This is after 2009. This is after I got caught. Cause I got I got caught by Secret Service in 2009. Okay. So this is like 2009, 2010. This is 2011. Okay, we're I'm coming sorry. Up on. That's my fault. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry okay. about that. Yeah, yeah, we're coming up on 2011. I, I, I'm thinking 09, but it wasn't 09 because you've been you're sitting around waiting because these these guys mm-hmm. forgot about you. Yeah. Okay, so now we're in 11, and you calm down with her. Yeah. And then what? Late, what, late, early, late 2010, something like that, or mid 2010, like that around that time. Yeah. Okay, and then what happens? Like, how, how does it go from there? Um. Well, I decide to start printing cards again. You know, because all my money's gone. I partied all that away. You know, I had, like, maybe, like, I had just enough to buy more equipment. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. And not even put gas in my car. I had just enough to buy new equipment. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it was like, I, I, I just, I so I just went in for another run. I just read up and geared back up and was like, okay, I'm going to jump back in. And I contacted a few people that I knew from before, and it was like, I picked up right where I left off. So now you're a plastic vendor again. I'm back. I'm back jumping again, yeah. And then, and then continue on on the path of of that. Yeah, for so over the next cars. about year and a half. Um, Man, I you stopped. waited a long time. What's that? I mean, that's a long gap. You know, from the time in between they, when they got yeah. caught, in between when I started back up again. No, I mean, like from the time they got you in South Carolina. You know, now we're in, we're pushing 2011. Yeah, so it's about two and a half years yeah. later. Two years later. Whew. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I start printing cards again. I jump back into it. Because at this point, like I said, I don't have enough. I don't have any money. And I'm not going and getting a regular fucking job. Fuck that. You know what I mean? I'll take my penitentiary chances before I fucking go and get a nine to five. So yeah, I started printing cards. And for about a year and a half, I started, I just jumped back into it and just went full fucking steam, you know? And then now, does she know you're doing it? Rosalia? Yeah. 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 Okay. And then so you get that year and a half in and then it mm-hmm. starts to come down? Um, we, yeah, so I, I get pulled over one day and we're driving and I get pulled over. I didn't think nothing of it because at this point, the South Carolina shit is so far back in the rearview mirror. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. And we get pulled over and, um, I go to jail. I get picked up. I say, you got a warrant out for your arrest. I said, oh fuck. But I'm not thinking about, I'm not thinking about South Carolina shit. I'm thinking about Operation Open Market. Mm-hmm. Because I'm aware of that going on. Okay, and what's Operation Open Market? Uh, Operation Open Market was a, um, well, I believe it was the Secret Service and the FBI. It may have been just the Secret Service, but they were trying to take down uh, one of the bigger carding forums, and they were they had pretty much um, figured out who like all the big key players like in Europe were, and like a couple people in the United States, I believe, that were like printing cards and shit, and they just did a big sweep and arrested everybody. 
So and at this point they're they're just working along on that? with a lot of John Doe's, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So then what happens with So this? I'm thinking I'm getting picked up for for carding. Like mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm getting picked up because they fucking figured out I was they somehow fucking found me or whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm like, listen, I'm in the car. I told my wife, I said, listen, go home, get everything out. Everything. All the equipment, all my cards, everything. Just get rid of it. Do whatever you got to do. Get the fuck rid of it. Because they're going to come to the house and search. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm fucking freaking out. I get to the Hillsborough County Jail. I get booked in. Uh, I go to arraignment the next morning. And, um, you know, I go to court. And, they were, and then I finally get picked up. And I'm, I'm sitting there for like a week. And I don't know what's going on. Like nobody's telling me anything. You know what I mean? When I went up for arraignment, they just told me my charges. I'm like, okay, that's cool. What were the charges? Then? Um, it was aggravated <clears throat> identity theft and um, the manufacturing of a fraudulent transaction device. Mm-hmm. So like, okay, I'm fucked. You know what I mean? Again, you know what I mean? And uh, it wasn't until I got to Pinellas County Jail that I had realized that it was from South Carolina. They said, yeah, you got a hold on you out of the Southern District of Southern South Carolina. Uh. I'm like, oh fuck, that's what it's for. That's what it's for. I'm fucking start tripping. So I call my wife and I got I got a PR bond after they, you know, they let me out on um I had to report to the pretrial services mm-hmm. for the federal pretrial mm-hmm. services. So I had to go through that whole rigmarole. Yeah. And I when I got home, I was like, you know, uh she's like, I got rid of all the equipment like you told me to. I was like, Well, where are all my cards at? Where are my debit cards at? Because that's where all my money was. I was like, where are my debit cards at? She's like, I got rid of everything. <laughs> and that was it. Like my heart sunk. Yeah, like I'm done. I'm done. Because all my money was gone. You know, a little over two and a half million dollars. Oof. Gone. So what do you do? You go to jail. You know, these are the bad times. Yeah. 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 So now you, so at this point, you're out though, right? I'm on pretrial you're services. On, you're on pre-release. I'm on, pre-tri- I'm on pre-release. I'm on pre-trial yeah. services. I got a little bit of money. Not much. You know, I had a little bit of money in cash. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just, you know, enough to pay our bills and try and figure out this whole legal situation. Yeah, so I'm on pretrial services, and then I end up abs- absconding on pretrial services because I can't stop smoking pot. Like, I'm not one of those people that be like, oh, I'm on probation now. I can't smoke. No. I'm on probation. Now I have to figure out how I can smoke and get away with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I end up, uh, like, a pissing dirty or something like that, and, like, I knew I was going to go to jail, so I just stopped reporting, and, like, me and my wife moved to a different condo on the other side of Tampa and shit like that. Yeah. So now you're on, now I'm on, on the, the run. run again. Again. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm on the run again. And then how long is that going for? A couple of months, maybe, until they found me, until the fucking U.S. Marshals fucking came and got me at the apartment. Yeah. Do you know how they found you? Was it just investigative uh, work? It had to have been investigative yeah. work because they looked. They, they raided my uncle's house. My uncle called me the night before they came and got me at my house. My uncle called me. He's like, dude, the fucking U.S. Marshals just kicked my door in. He's like, I just finished burning the fucking, you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking my uncle's old stoner, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's like, fucking dude, the U.S. Marshals just kicked my fucking door so he's in. he's probably like, what the fuck, John? Like, yeah, he called me. I'm like, dude, fucking, I'm sorry, bro. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. Like, I don't even know how that happened because I've never used his address for anything. Maybe because we had the same last name. They thought I was in Michigan. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, yeah, and then the very next day, they fucking came and got me. Yeah. So now they violate you on the pre-release. So now you're held They violate until... me on the pre-release, and now I'm being held until I'm going to be extradited to um, South Carolina now. So now I'm in Pinellas County Jail, and I'm waiting on extradition. Okay. Yeah. And now do you have a, a paid lawyer or a public defender at this time? At this time point in time, anything? I haven't even seen my judge in South Carolina. Okay. So I'm waiting until I get to South Carolina to figure out what the situation is before I can figure out if I want to pay for a lawyer or I want to, you know, see what they what they give me or what or what I what I was even facing. Like I didn't know what I didn't know what kind of time my charges brought. Like I didn't, I didn't know anything. Like I'm completely fucking clueless at this point. I didn't know how the fe- the federal, the FBOP operated. I didn't understand the point system or the the classification. I didn't understand. That was all. I had to learn all of this going in. Now, how horrible was that sitting there not knowing, just waiting to get the, it's the worst feeling in the world, right? Because like you don't know. There's there's m- so much uncertainty. Like uncertainty is like, it's a stress. It's a stressor. You know what I mean? Like you just fucking stress. Hell on earth. Hell on earth. Yeah. You, you can't you, eat. You can't fucking sleep. Yeah. You're losing weight. You look like shit. Yeah, and then and then when you lay down, you're thinking, okay, this scenario, that scenario. Oh, you're running every. You're, yeah, you're playing a million oh. scenarios. Okay, it could play out oh, this way. I, it could play out that way. I know but if this feeling. person says this or does this or this happens, mm-hmm. and that's a whole other fucking. Every conundrum. possible scenario goes through your head. Yeah, and it does. To, yeah. That almost makes you yeah. off your rocker. You insane. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, how long do you have to sit in uh, Pinellas County before Pinellas you... County? I was in Pinellas County like maybe like two fucking months Ugh. before they even fucking transferred me. Yeah. It might have been three months. Three months in the county worrying like that? Yeah. Oh, Before they even God. came to put me on the plane to fucking sh- fly me up to fucking Georgia or wherever they flew me to. Yeah, the oh. FBOP Georgia. 
Yeah. Oh, the, oh, I sent you to Georgia, and then Georgia. And then just... I sat in Georgia for like a month in the shoe. Oh. No commissary. <laughs> You know what I mean? In the shoe, listening to crazy wild motherfuckers scream all night and kick doors. And you know what I mean? Yeah. The dude hung himself from the cell across from me. Oh, Some young nice. kid coming in, fucking hung himself. Jesus. Uh, that's, that's a great thing to see. Yeah, Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta was pretty wild. Wow. Yeah, Atlanta was wild. So you're there a month. Then you find, do they? They then... put me in a van and they drive me up. They drive me from Atlanta to South Carolina. I bet that was a fun drive. Yeah, that was like a fucking 20 hours shackled with your ankles. And then your, your wrists are bound to your fucking waist. And you, they don't let you out to piss, or they don't feed you, or nothing. You're jammed in there with a bunch of dudes, and every, in there you can't grab onto nothing, and it's just, it's fucking, it's, everybody's stinking, and it's it was just, fun. Yeah, it was a great time. Yeah, great time. Yeah, I had, I had, I had fun. You'd love to do it again, I'm sure, right? <laughs> yeah. So then you get to South Carolina, and then what happens? I finally there? get there. I get fucking settled in. I get a public defender. You know, and she comes at me, and she, you know, she's telling me what my charges are, and, and you know what the, the 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 what each sentence, which each charge carries, like the sentence for each charge. And she's like, okay, well, this is the probability of uh, you getting X amount of years. And she was trying to get all my for like, okay, well, well, have you ever been in trouble before? And I was like, well, I had a pretty eventful youth, you know what I mean. But she's like, well, all that's sealed, and that doesn't really, you know, they can't really access that. She's like, as an adult, she's like, do you have any felonies? I said, she's like, I see here, you don't really have any felonies. I was like, no, this is my first. My first real, my first real felony. She's like, okay, well, do you have your high school diploma? I said, yeah, I have my high school diploma. She's like, do you have, have you been to college or anything? I'm like, yeah, I have my college degree. She's like, okay, are you married? I was like, yeah, I'm married. I have a kid. I have a, you know what I mean? So I had all of these things going for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so she went away and she talked to the prosecuting attorney. She came back like two months later or something like that. Uh, I got denied bond because I had absconded on um, pre-trial, pre-trial release. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I get, they wouldn't let me out on bond. They wouldn't give me a tether. They wouldn't do any of that shit for me. You know, so yeah, so, you know, she's figuring out and then, so it was like 150 months they came with at first. It's like 10 years. Yeah. You know, so then she started going through my case and I'm like, and then I'm like, well, the old man who opened my package was like, what about him? He's not going to get in trouble. I said, I don't remember how the conversation got onto it. She's like, wait, 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 what? I was like, yeah, he, he opened my package and that's how, that's how they fucking, that's how they arrested me or whatever. She's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's looking through my um, my discovery and all this other shit. She's like, we just got your discovery, and that's not in the discovery. She's like, let me check on a few things. I'll get back with you. And she came back. Um, it was a while. Like I was, it was a nail biter because I can't call my lawyer, and I don't have anybody on the outside like helping me do anything. Like I don't have anybody on the outside helping me call lawyers or or figure shit out or putting money on my books or none of that shit. You now, know what I mean? When you're in South Carolina, where's your girl? Uh, my wife. Your wife. She's I'm in sorry. Miami. She's in Miami. Yeah, she's okay. In Miami. And how she handled this? Uh, you know, she was a wreck. She had a, she didn't have any skills to speak of. She you know, no education. She you know so she and she was now a single mother. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With an apartment with that, that she couldn't afford, with all this nice furniture and shit that she had, she couldn't move to anywhere. Like so, she, she went through some shit. Yeah. Yeah. She 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 went through it. So now you're in the uh, I, I take it you're in a. Uh, federal. Well, you're in the in South Carolina I'm in, in the, the county. I'm in but a county. In a, I'm in a little shithole oh. county jail in South Carolina where they hold the federal inmates. Federal inmates, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, how long are you there for? Now, see this timeline here. It, I'm kind of fuzzy on this one. You know what I mean? Between the time I got picked up in Pinellas to when the time I actually got sentenced. But this is about 2012. Mm-hmm. So I know I was there definitely over the holidays. So I had to got picked up around. The end of 2000, no, it was the beginning of 2012 because my son was born in 2012. So it was the end of 2012 when I got picked up. So I, was, I did about six months, I think, and sat there going through like all the court processes through, you know, because you got to get sentenced and you got to go through, you know, all, do all your shit. And yeah, and then you got to get designated. You got to wait. But, you know, all this time they're counting. It's yeah. All fucking, it's all it's rolling, all with, rolling with you. Right. Yeah, yeah. So your public defender. Well, right, yeah, so she came back, I think it was a couple months. I mean, it was like a month later or something like that because I guess she had been going back and forth with the prosecuting attorney trying to work out a deal. And she came back, she's like, listen, they're going to dismiss the uh, the possession of a fraudulent transaction device. They're going to dismiss the wire fraud. They're going to dismiss the mail fraud. They're going to dismiss the uh, possess- uh, manufacturing of a pro- fraudulent transaction device. And the only thing they're really going to uh, want to go with is the um, aggravated identity theft because you did have your picture on someone else's driver's license when I used to uh, open the, the box at the UPS store. And that carried a mandatory minimum of 24 months. So they knew they could get that. Everything else was, was going to be wishy-washy because of the asshole that opened the package. The, illegally opened the package. Yeah, he right. fucked up their whole case. Right. He fucked it up. He fucked it all up. So I, the only thing I they could really... I hate him. Yeah, the only thing they could really stick me with was the... Um, 
Yeah, it was the aggravated identity theft. And uh, is that what you pled to then? That's what I pled to. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now you go get sentenced, and the mandatory is mandatory minimum was twenty four months. Okay, but minute... I already had like I don't remember it was like eight or nine months in at that yeah. Point in time. Yeah. Okay, so when you get sentenced, you have a couple months, and what is what? What do you get at sentencing? I got twenty four months at sentencing. Oh, okay. So you did good. Yeah. You had a good public defender. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She was a sweetheart. Yeah. She really went to bat for me. Yeah, you were talking before we started the uh, the podcast or you know YouTube channel how how great she was to yeah 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 I got uh, lucky. What's her name? Uh, Catherine Everett. Catherine Everett. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, shout out to Catherine Everett, right? Yeah. South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now you sent to twenty four months. You mm-hmm. got about eight nine in with the county. Yeah. So you got what? Maybe a year left, roughly, a little bit over a, little a year. A little over a year left, yeah, 14 months or something like that left. Okay, yeah. and then where do they uh, designate you to or designate me in what jail do they put well, you in and what Florida. level? I was from Florida, and, and so they desi- I didn't make, didn't, didn't make the camp because I had absconded too many times. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So what they did is they uh, designated me like a level one, so I just, you know, I got sent to a low. And so they, they, they designated me, and they asked me, like, well, okay, what prison – I was like, what prison's closest to my to Miami? Because in my brain, I'm like, okay, let me try and get as close to home as I can so my wife can come and see me and, you know what I mean, I can ride the rest of my time out like that. And um, I couldn't go to Miami because Miami is a camp. And so I had to go to Coleman, Coleman Low. Coleman Low. Yeah. Okay. And then by the time you get there, how much time do you have left, roughly? About 12, 13 months. 12, right. And was it rough or? No. Cake, no. It's cake the softest cool. fucking place so- I've ever been to in my <laughs> really? life. Yeah. Did it go quick? Once I got in and I, you know, I made a couple of friends and I met, I met Matt and we got into that whole thing with writing my story and, you know, writing my book and everything like, yeah, time just started sailing. For yeah. Me. You know, plus I'm tattooing in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm fucking watching TV. We're fucking making nachos. We're hanging out playing bocce ball. Yeah. It's a fucking summer camp. Yeah. It was a summer camp. Yeah. yeah. It okay. wasn't, I didn't do any hard time. Yeah. Well, it wasn't yeah. like, uh. Let's go ahead and clear the air now. Yeah. I didn't do any hard time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are like that. They like to act like it was so hard. And, no, no, not at all. The county was rougher. Yeah. The county jail was way rougher than when I got to the compound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So you get out of – so you do your time at Coleman. Yeah. Kind of breezes by because you write your book. Uh, I'm sure that made the time fly yeah. pretty quick. We didn't really get too much into the book. I think we just did like a basic like outline. Mm-hmm. And then I got released. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I got released. And then Matthew <coughs> will, uh, finished the rest of the book. Okay. So you get released, and um, I how much? I think you said what did you I get? had three years of paper. Three years of paper. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So now you get out. I'm in the halfway house in Miami. I gotta give me six months halfway house. Okay, six months halfway house. Yeah. Okay. And then wh- take it from there. So yeah, I go to halfway house. Uh, I do my six months halfway house. I get a job at a warehouse in Miami, <clears throat> and I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. I'm saving money. You know, I'm staying out of trouble. My brain isn't even going to fraud or anything like that. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try and – I'm out of prison. I don't have anything hanging over my head. I get out. I came home to nothing, by the way. I came home to nothing. I had no clothes. I had nothing. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. what my wife did with all my shit, but it was all gone. Like, all my jewelry, all my clothes, nothing. I came home to nothing. So I was wearing, like, you know, the prison Nikes you get at the commissary and the jogging outfit. That's what I'm wearing when I get out of prison. Like, I don't have shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm broke. And I'm working at this warehouse in Miami, and I, I – Worked, saved enough money to get like a, a studio apartment in fucking in Little Havana on like 12th and Flagler, which shit neighborhood. And so, you know, I have to walk all the way downtown Miami at like four o'clock in the morning to catch the very first train, an hour to Hialeah to catch another bus, an hour just to get to my job. And I had to do that every single day, dude. Going to work and coming home. And how long did you do that for? A couple of months before I was like, you know what? I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> I got to figure out, I got to figure out how to do more fraud. Yeah. Yeah. So then what happens? So I started doing, I started doing more fraud and, uh, the same thing. Yeah. I started carding. I started getting back in and doing more <laughs> carding. And, um, I was messing with this chick from the halfway house and her brother, me and her, me and him kind of got into to carding and, you know, I made a mistake with mailing, um, holograms to my own address from China and they got caught at customs and then like the fucking the Miami financial crimes unit got involved. And then like, you know, so I ended up going back on the run again <laughs> after I just got out of prison Yeah. again for the same shit. Okay. I take off. I go to Michigan. You know what I mean? I'm in Michigan. I'm, I'm doing, I'm it's, I'm replaying the, what just happened. It's I'm fucking replaying it. 
Like, I don't know if I have some kind of mental retardation that just doesn't allow me to learn from my first mistake. I have to make the same mistake twice in order to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's always been. And it don't matter how, you know, severe the mistake. Like, I just got done in federal prison. Yeah, yeah. I just got done starving to death and getting shipped all around the fucking country and, and going through all of that shit. And here I am doing it again. And right. I'm back on the run again. And your plan was once I go to prison, I'm done. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that was, yeah. Well, yeah that, that. And then life hit me in the fucking <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, re- life, reality hit you. Reality life. fucking slapped me in the face. No I'm like, thanks. I can't, I can't, I can't. There's no way I can do this. Yeah. I thought I could. I thought I could do the nine to five, the 40 hours a week and just be, be happy and just pay my bills and watch, you know, the sports on the weekends and, and the fucking get into a sitcom and yeah, date get, some fucking, yeah. you know, some bitch. I, I thought I could do that, but I can't. I can't live that kind of life. So now you're on the run. You go back to Michigan. Yeah. You're carding. No, no, no. I'm not carding at this point. I okay. just run to Michigan. Oh, you just I'm run broke. to Michigan. Yeah, broke. I run to Michigan. I'm fucking poor. I'm broke. And what the hell do you do there? Crash on my cousin's couch and get drunk every day for the whole summer. Yeah. For the whole fucking summer, just getting trashed, partying downtown Detroit, not giving a fuck. You know what I mean? My wife calls me up probably around uh, September of... So I absconded in July of 2015, and my wife hits me up like around September of um, 2015, and she's in Nebraska. The hell is she doing in Nebraska? Apparently, her, one of her, a couple of her uncles were out there, and she, they called her, and they're like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of work out here, and they pay a lot, and the cost of living's low, so she wanted to get out of Miami, whatever. She went out there. She calls me up and says, I'm pregnant. Hmm. Yeah, it's yours. Like, okay. And I was fucking her. Like, when I was in the halfway house, I was fucking her. When I got out of halfway house, I was fucking her. And then she just disappeared one day. Like, I went over to her mom and dad's house, which was only a few blocks from where I lived, like three blocks. And I went over to her mom and dad's house. Whole bedroom was empty. <laughs> Furniture, gone. Gone. You know what I mean? Her parents don't speak English. So, I, and, and my Spanish is limited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, I, my Spanish is a lot better. But at that time, you know what I mean? My Spanish was extremely limited. So my, I could only communicate, I could only understand a few things that I can understand that she was with her uncle somewhere and that's what I got. And that was it. No phone call. I couldn't get, she wouldn't answer my, you know, phone was disconnected, no email, social media, none of, nothing, nothing, just ghost. So I'm like, all right. So I just started doing me in Miami and then all that shit happened. So she calls me up in September and I end up going out to Nebraska, you know, to be with her and, you know, try and do the right thing. And, you know, my son's out there. She's out there. I'm like, all right, fuck. I, I'm going to go hide in Nebraska. I mean, this is the perfect fucking place for me to hide. In the middle of nowhere. Fuck, I'll go hide in the middle of a cornfield somewhere just fucking, you know, playing the fucking the family thing. Yeah. And I'll be good. Nah. What happened? That's not what happened. Not what happened at all. Not huh? what happened. First of all, she's like, yeah, 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 I got us a place to stay. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm coming out there. So I get out. I catch the Amtrak. First of all, from fucking, I had, to, I had to call my dad and get him to buy me a fucking Amtrak ticket to go from Detroit to fucking Nebraska. So I get them to Nebraska and she picks me up from the fucking Amtrak station and we're going to some dude's house to sneak all her snuff out in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're sneaking all her stuff out of some dude's house in the middle of the night. Okay. I'm like, okay, this is fucking sketch. Uh, yeah. So we end up at some hotel. She has a job, mind you. She has a, a job in, 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 in Nebraska. So we end up at some hotel that we didn't even have the money to pay. So somehow she went up to the front office and convinced the dude to let this is a small town. She convinced the dude to let us stay a couple of days and not pay to, until she could get her check so that she could pay the room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is a situation that I've just been thrust into. Ah. You yeah. dig what I'm saying? Yeah, so now you take an Amtrak to Nebraska, right? To be home. With with blinders on. Yeah, with blinders on. Ste- now you gotta steal her shit out of whatever guy's house. Yeah, we're sneaking her shit out of some fucking creep some dude's basement. It's just the whole thing. Jesus. Yeah, we're in some hotel we can't pay for. And now you're homeless again in a hotel. Yeah. Like, it's like deja vu. Yeah. All but, over again. But now you're it's deja vu with your wife and about to have a kid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, that sounds like uh yeah. that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> so Apparently, she, she meets somebody at her job, and they tell her about somebody else. That So we went over there, and we talked to them. They had a fifth-wheel camper in the back of their fucking house that we could that they let us live in. Camper, like, hick, hickish type thing? It wasn't a trailer. It was like, yeah. you know, like you got a fifth wheel, yeah. and you fucking hook it up to the fifth wheel or whatever. Uh-huh. So it had, like, a bathroom. It had a kitchen. Okay. It had a shower. It had the bed up in the front, and then, like, the sofas and shit. Hey, it beats the alternative. I was camping. Yeah. I was camping. Yeah. And it's kind of good for you being on the run, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, this is, you know, this sucks, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier it out. And like, there's only one place to go from here is up. Right. You know, so I get a I get a job in, in Nebraska. I was, uh, hosing out cattle trailers. The hell is that? Huh. 
Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been through the Midwest or taken car trips or whatever. I don't know if you've ever seen those big double-decker fucking trailers hauling cattle. Okay. And they got cattle on fucking two layers. Yes, I've seen them. And the cattle, they're just shitting and pissing mm-hmm. all over the fucking place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I had I had to work it out at a, at a wash, a truck wash, hosing them out with this fucking hose that would just blow you straight off your fucking feet, <laughs> spraying cow shit everywhere. <laughs> I, mind you, I used to fly private and drive brand new fucking cars. And here I am knee deep in cow shit in bumfuck Nebraska. Like it couldn't get any fucking worse than this. My life, I had hit rock bottom to me at this so, point. So let me get this straight. You go from Johnny Cards, right? Crushing it. Okay. Bottles after bottles, flying private. <laughs> <laughs> you are now in Nebraska. Bumfuck Nebraska. Bumfuck Nebraska. Spraying shit it off wasn't trucks. Not even Omaha or Lincoln. This is bumfuck Nebraska. <laughs> oh, boy. Now I'm working at a truck wash, hosing out fucking <laughs> shitty cow, fucking cattle trailers and, and goddamn hog trailers. and <laughs> Woo. It's all bad, bro. And it's that, all bad and at that this one. Point. I'm sorry a lot, but God damn. I eventually got a better job. <laughs> okay? I eventually moved I on. I mean, what, what's worse? I eventually moved on from that. <laughs> Um, well, I got to ask you, John, how long did you do that for? Uh, pff, dude, a solid two months. What? Yeah. Wow. Because if, if I didn't do that, because my wife, she, you know, we wouldn't have eaten. We wouldn't even have food to right, eat. Right, no, I understand. No, I, you know what? That's a responsible man. man there, for real. You know? We no, would I'm all being serious with you. No, that's a responsible man. Yeah. I mean, as bad as as funny it is for me to hear. You know oh, I, I mean? laugh at it now, too. Yeah. It's hilarious. It wasn't funny then. But you know what? You're a responsible man, though, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously, I, that's what a responsible man does. You, you know, if that's what you got to do for your, your that's right. You yeah. know, and if you got to spray down shit, yeah, it sucks. But yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, cool. the money wasn't that bad. Like I was getting like like four hundred fifty bucks a week cash. Look, and that's cash, untaxed. Yeah, that's cash. And, and, sucked, and, and dude, bump dude, at the end of the week, man, like that four hundred fifty bucks when I had it, we could go buy groceries and we could yeah. go get a burrito. You know what I mean? And we can go do laundry we, instead of washing it in the fucking in the in the sink and hanging it because we couldn't afford to do laundry. Yeah, it ain't all that bad when yeah, when yeah, you look yeah, at it like that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, I eventually got a better job. Right. You know, I moved up. So what was the what job did you go to? I was a warehouse to job. It was logistics. Yeah. You know, I went and just because that's what I know. You know, so I went and, and was working at this warehouse and we're doing pretty good. It's probably like heaven. It was for the in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing good. I was making like uh, was like eleven bucks an hour. You yeah. know what I mean? I was working 50 hours a week. My checks were all right. I was doing all right. You know what I mean? I, I eventually uh, got us a house. Like, I met some old guy, and he had a house that was all fucked up. And he said if we moved in and fixed the house up, we could just stay there and fucking pay him, like, 300 bucks a month as long as I did the whole renovation. So I do that. We moved my, moved my wife and my son into this house. I, I First of all, I, I renovated one room, like, the biggest room in the house. I tore out all the walls all the way down to the studs, completely renovated You know how to do all that? I learned Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I knew a little bit just from over the years of fucking around working for a drywall yeah. company. Yeah. So, you know, and I learned YouTube is a great fucking a tool to learn to learn with. And you, you learn how to do anything with YouTube. So I learned how to do drywall and I learned how to rewire sockets and I learned how to do tile and I learned how to do carpentry and I learned That's how to fucking do awesome, man. all that shit. So I, I, I basically remodeled this entire home by myself. Wow. Literally by my by my own. I did, I did all the demo. You know what I mean? Like, how the I hell do everything. you do that? Like, I'm not a handyman. Like, I can't swing a hammer. Yeah. Um, but how do you do that by yourself? Uh, I mean, you, you got to really you have just, some You just go in and, and think of, okay, what do I need? Do I need to demo this room? Let's tear it all out. And then, you okay, what's the next step? Uh, do I need to fix the electrical? Let's figure that out. Damn, you're a monster, yeah, John. Yeah, yeah. Damn. So I, I figured it all out, and I, I renovated. I, so I renovated this <clears> one room. I moved my family into this one room, and then I, I slowly renovated the rest of the home Holy by myself. Shit. Room for room, room by room, and it, dude, it was fucking nice when I was done, dude. This place was, I mean, you know, brand new carpet, brand new paint, brand new drywall. I did all the trim. I did all the tile in the kitchen, new countertops. It was fucking, this place was- it You was, learned how to do tile, I turned too? it from a, yeah, I turned it, yo, that was, it wasn't that hard. Like, once you learn and learn how to cut the tile and do the mud and learn how to level, and it's not that, it's not that difficult. Yeah. Do you have any I'm, pictures of what you did, like, I do, yeah, 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 I can. I got all- Yeah, you got to send them to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. when I cut it up, I'll put them up. It was a shithole. Yeah, because you, you know what? I mean, there was piles of feces in there. There was holes in the walls. I mean, the, the plumbing was just leaking into the fucking floor. And, I mean, it was fucked. Now, how cool is it? Like, I know, like, when this studio started, how it looked and how. And I look at it now, and I go, oh, shit, it's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. How cool was it to see the house, like, the you, before you and get, then after the work that really, you did? You get a really good sense of accomplishment yeah. when you do something like that. That I hadn't experienced before. I mean, I did with the cards because I felt like I had accomplished right. something. But I had never really felt accomplishment like that before. So I was proud of myself. Hell yeah. yeah. Dude, you did it all by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Okay, so you renovate the whole damn house I by do, yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you should you should have got a medal for that one. <laughs> they should have just cut your paper for that yeah. alone. Um, so now I'm working. I got a fucking nice house. Me and my wife are both working. Um, you know, we're saving money. We're both making pretty good money at this point. Now, she's working for a company called, uh, oh, I'm not going to put the name of the company, but she's working for a good company in this little town. She's making like 20 bucks an hour, working 12 hours a day, killing it, Damn. killing it. And I'm making good money. So now we're now we're, we're upgrading our vehicles. You know what I mean? We both got a couple of nice cars. I think I bought like an Audi, an A6, and she had a BMW, a 525, or something like that. Like we're, we're, we're doing all right. Now yeah. we're working class people. We're It's all honest. Like I'm not fucking around with no fraud at this point. Because I knew I, I had the warrant out for my arrest. So I knew I eventually was going to have to face the music. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I felt like if I could get established over here in Nebraska with a family and a house and all that shit, and then go and deal with my fucking, you know what I mean? With my shit. Violation, yeah. With my violation, <clears throat> then I'll fucking, I'll deal with yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I end up um, doing all right. You so, know? I mean, at that time, yeah. you, you did accomplish your good. goal. Yeah, we're doing you know? good. Yeah. We're doing all right. So now, when do they... Well, actually, so this is how. It was, how this, yeah, how did it all go down, dude? Ah, man, this is hard to talk about. Um, I don't know if I, my wife starts fucking around with dope, mm. with meth, and sorry to hear that. Yeah, I didn't know because I'm working. I had no idea what she was doing, and uh, the baby was born with meth in its system. They 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 found it at the hospital. Sorry to hear that. And here I am in the hospital bed, laying down with her, and two cops roll into the fucking room. Can we speak to you in the hallway? I'm like, okay. Well, we need to speak to you. Uh, we found in your in your baby's system in the baby. I'm like, I had no idea at this point in time. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm flabbergasted. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, yeah, there's meth in the baby's. <laughs> Great. My whole world just crashed down. Yeah. Everything just fucking fell down on me at that point in time. It was hard <sighs> to deal with that. Yeah. That was probably one of the most difficult, like emotionally, one of the most difficult times in my entire life. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then the kid turned out not to be mine on top of everything. What? Yeah, yeah. Another blow. Another blow. Yeah, another blow on top of that. And then, you know, so they, they take the kids. They take my son. They take the, the baby. Child and youth, right? Yep. They charge my wife with uh, endangerment, with mm-hmm. child endangerment. And she's got to go to court. They don't charge me because I go and pass a drug test. I mean, I tell you, I smoke weed, but I passed the drug test. Yeah. So they took custody away from us. They took the kids away some scumbag that she was smoking meth with. I don't know if she was fucking him. She says she wasn't. She denies it vehemently to this day, which I kind of believe her, whatever. He fucking flips out. He's like, pretty much, if you're not going to be with me, you're not going to be with anybody. Showed up at our house one night, cut all the screens, trying to trying to break in, cut all the tires on all the cars. What? Yep. And, and he was a piece of shit meth addict. From Everybody knew him in town. He was a fucking scumbag. Apparently, he had done a B&E somewhere, and... Through some kind of fucking weird association that they thought that I had something to do with the B&E because they had seen my wife. Somehow they connected me. What's B&E? Breaking entering. Oh, breaking entering. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then they sent the police over and the police show up at my house to question me about the breaking and entering. And while all of this shit's going on, I got a warrant for my arrest. So I'm, I'm, I'm fucked. I go back. So now, now they know it's you. Yeah, they know it's me and yeah. I go to jail. Yeah, they arrest me in, uh, in South Carolina. And I go back. Uh, I gotta get extra, now. I gotta get extradited back to South Carolina, and that took six months. Oh my god. Yep. That took like fucking six months straight up. Because now you gotta go in front of the judge for the violation, yep. right? Now I gotta go see the judge for the violation. <clears throat> and what did she give you? Uh, I got nine months in the violation. But you already had done six. I had done six. Yeah. And I had the same lawyer. They, cause I, you know, same case, so they issued me the same lawyer. Catherine Evett, God bless her heart, got my paper killed. Shout out to Catherine. Yep. Right. So they, they killed my paper, and yeah. they were like, you're not supervisable. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you're just, we had to extradite you from Florida. We've had to extradite you from, you <laughs> know they're, what I mean? They're tired of spending yeah. money on you. Yeah, you've, we had to extradite you from Nebraska. You <laughs> absconded on your, your initial, you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. you're just not supervisable. Yeah. And she, the judge had already given me the maximum she could give me on that violation. And I had already received a mandatory minimum for my, for my, for my charge. So she couldn't send me back to prison, and she's like, "Listen, we're just gonna keep going through this. You're not supervisable." But I, at the, I'm not. Listen, I'm not a hardened criminal. I don't have a rap sheet that's fucking ten feet long. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, it's not like I'm a danger to the public. I'm not a raper. I'm right. not a, a so fucking stabber. You know what I mean? Like. Right. So it's not like like the the let's just say leniency that they, they may were have given show, you. They weren't putting anybody in, in in danger by releasing me and right. not making me be. You a weren't supervised. a threat to society. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. So then they just cut your paper and they did cut you're me done. Loose. Yeah. 
So like you said, blessing in disguise, maybe. It was it. It was a wrap. So now, after going through all that, yeah. uh, this is one whirlwind here, boy. Yeah. I mean, oh, there's, it, there's plenty, trust me, there's plenty more to it, man. We just haven't been able to get real deep, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, yeah, after all this. Now you, now you get out that you get the paper cut and now where do you go because now you realize that your wife i go back to nebraska you go back to nebraska go back to nebraska and try and work it out with her hey nuts yeah yeah okay well you go all right yeah so you go back to nebraska and try to, to work nebraska it out. i try and work it out with her we get the kids back you do yeah we she they they we went through the whole court thing with the visits with the supervised visits mm-hmm. and the whole fucking drug rumoral, testing and all that everything and yeah then, so then they knew that all my court shit was done mm-hmm. and over with and i was free and they had, were given randoms. They were coming to our home and drug testing us, me and my wife, like randomly. Like some dude would just show up. And any time of day. Any time of day. Yeah, between, well, between 8 a.m. and, because, you know, they were going to come late at yeah. night or whatever. But, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, we, we went through the whole rigmarole. We got the kids back. And then, unfortunately, I just, I couldn't let all that go. Like all the shit that had happened with the, with the dude and with, all, and a bunch of other random shit with other dudes. I'm just like. We just couldn't get along after this point. Like, we were just at each other's throats, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So now, is it, do you go back? Where do you go from there? Um, well, so we end up going, our, we split up. She mm-hmm. took off and went to Iowa. You know what I mean? Because she had family in Iowa, which is just the next state over from Nebraska. So she goes to Iowa. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here in Nebraska? What the fuck am I doing out here in the middle of nowhere? You know what I mean? So in my brain, I'm like, what do I do? Do I go to Michigan? Because I got family there. But I've already been down that road. What do I do? Do I go to do I go back to Miami and start eventually doing more fucking carding? Because that's what it's gonna come down to. You know? So I was talking to my cousin at the time. My cousin, me and my cousin are really cool. And um he's like, dude, you should go to California, man. Because like his 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 girl that he's with, uh, his fiance is from California. And they, I guess, were eventually moving because they were in Michigan, but they were eventually moving to California. And he's like, dude, go to California, go to California. You know, so I apply to a bunch of jobs. I'm in Nebraska. I apply to a shitload of jobs uh, online. I, you know, submit my resume, my, my resume, the one that I created. Right, right. It, it looked gangster, you know what I mean? Yeah, it looked like yeah. I had a bunch of years in logistics yeah. and manufacturing and you know what I mean? I got, but you know, I got solid education to back all this up. Yeah. So yeah, I applied to a bunch of jobs and I ended up getting a job with uh, Tesla. Really? Yeah. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah, I go out. To, I go out to uh, California out and I start here. working for Tesla. I mean, it's logistics. I wasn't running the Still, fucking place. Yeah. I'm not an engineer. I'm I not know, up there know, hanging out with Elon. Right. You know what I mean? I'm I'm a fucking worker bee, but you know, nonetheless, I'm working at Tesla. Yeah. How was it there? Uh, it's pretty grueling. It's a it's a good job. It's good benefits. It's good pay. But yeah, the hours are just grueling, man. Six days a week, twelve hours mandatory. And what were you doing? I was in logistics, so I was uh, what's called a uh, um, a logistics coordinator. You know, I would handle um, all of the logistics for Tesla because they didn't really house all of their parts where they manufactured the cars on site. You know, they were in different warehouses in different cities. So there was like this constant 24-hour Congo line of, of semi-trucks transporting parts between all the warehouses and the, ma- and, the, and the factory where the actual vehicles are built and manufactured. So I was, you know, a part of the logistics team that coordinated all of that and made sure the right parts. Because, you know, all those Teslas, when they build Teslas, every single one of those cars are made to order. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't just make fleets of them all the same. Right. So, you know, the logistics of each part to build each car, it's not like a regular it, manufacturing it's process. It's custom. Right. Yeah. So the, the logistics and the flow of parts, it's, it's a whole, it's a, it's a ballet dance. That's interesting. I, I heard yeah. he runs a tight ship. Yeah. Oh, he don't fuck around. Now, yeah. now you as a smart guy who did like, you know, when we go back and, you know, you study the demographics of, of the card operation, everything sure, else. Yeah. Now you go and you work for a place like Tesla with yeah. a fucking, ro- literally a rocket scientist in Elon. Yeah. W- what did you think of how he ran? Their process over yeah. there? Uh, you know, it's. It's one of the greatest companies on the planet. Yeah. Plain and simple. You know, the things that they're doing there, the innovation, the everything they're doing for humanity and like the furtherment of, of the technology just in general. Like, I don't even like, I know that they're trying to make money because it's a business. So, you know, they have to make money. But I don't, I think Elon even said himself that his initial goal of creating Tesla and creating electric cars wasn't to turn a profit, but it was to push the rest of the world and the rest of the automakers to do the same because he showed them that it could be done. And it could be done cheaply, and it could be done efficiently. Now, what do you think about uh, that chip he's developing for the to- Neuralink? Neuralink, yeah, oh, I'm all I'm all with it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm all with, with it. it. Me too. I mean, you know, the initial technology is he's going to help fucking cripple people walk. Yeah, 
He's going to help blind people see. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? I mean? Imagine all of the brain disorders and the nerve disorders yeah. and all of the things that we can fucking correct with just, you know, a simple technology. You know, he that had, this guy, this man is pioneering. Yeah. Well, I, I know he's got 10 of them done. There, there's like 10 different ones that are done. And, and like one goes in and to make it simplified, you know, the chip goes in. It just is. Yeah, I watched the whole thing on it. It's yeah. The neural lace. And yeah, 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 yeah. And it goes right to say you got Parkinson's. Yeah. Right. Let's just say it's like a fishing line. Yep. That chip is, has a line connected to it, say, and it will go right to the part of your yeah. brain that's creating the Parkinson's yeah. disease. And it's just and a like certain that, bandwidth. And it's gone. Yeah. And this, it's amazing. And this guy's he's de- literally, actually. He's literally changing the world. He is. Yeah. And then. Never he, mind SpaceX and going to fucking yeah. Mars and all that. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. Right. And then he's yeah. got the one, because he's really worried about AI, you know. Very concerned. Uh, very concerned. Very so concerned. then he's got the other chip that basically makes you as fast as the computer. And then on top Eventually, of, hopefully. Yeah. I want one. <laughs> Fucking chip me up. Listen, if Elon invents it, you know, people say, oh, but listen, if that guy invents it, I've yeah. watched him on Rogan. Yeah. I've watched yeah. him do that. If he invents it and it and he says it's good, I don't need any more approval. <laughs> Give it to me. You're in, huh? Uh, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, maybe not the first version. I'll, well, I'll no, let, I'll I, let yeah, you know what I mean. I, I, I don't want the beta. Yeah, yeah. I, I want the... Uh, give me the 2.0. Yeah, yeah. Give, you know me, I mean? give yeah. me the 2.0. Yeah. And then on top of that, so the guy's doing the chips. He's doing Tesla. And then this guy's shooting a rocket up. Yeah, he's got that the comes back in Solar lands, City. And, and it can be batteries. reused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reusable, reliable rockets. And he's rockets. doing all this at once. Yeah. Monster, bro. Yeah. Hey, what, do you, what, do they, what do they call him? The, the real life Iron Man? I mean, he's... No, no real life. Uh, um, 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 yeah, Tony Stark. Tony Stark. Yeah, 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 yeah. you got it. Tony Stark. Yeah. So, and how long were you at Tesla for? Uh, two years. That's awesome. Yeah, I was at Tesla about two years, and, I, and unfortunately, I, I had an accident, I ended up hurting my back, and I was out on disability, um, just extreme back pain. And um, when my disability was getting ready to end, I was just like, man, I can't. I don't want to do the nine to five thing anymore. I don't. Yeah. You know, but I wouldn't. I didn't want to go back to fraud either. Yeah. You know? Because I got lucky, dude. Oh, my God, dude. I got so fucking lucky. With the kill, with they killed my paper. And, you know, just time and time and time and time again after keep getting caught, keep getting caught. And I keep somehow, I'm not going to keep getting that lucky. Yeah. Like, the odds are forever not in your favor. Right. The luck is going to run no, out. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and when you kind of look at it. You're and not... I'm getting older. And now I'm getting older. Right. You know, I'm learning from mistakes. I've been through all this shit. And I'm getting older. And I'm like, I'm, as you get older, your priorities change. The way you your your thought process changes, you know what I mean. The, the the things that are important to you in life changes. Your goals change, you know. And I and I, I and luckily I went through that. Tra- I was able to go through that transition. Yeah, and I know I a lot of people Francisco. that don't believe that. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people have that stereotype that you know somebody can't change. Yeah. But I've changed. You've changed. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. other people that we know have changed. Definitely. You know what I mean? But you got to go through a lot to get to that point. You know. No, I agree. And, you know. He, not, you know, the book's great, but talking to you one-on-one and, you know, hearing you, for all the bad that's happened and all the nightmare mm-hmm. things that you've gone through, mm-hmm. there's also been a lot of, re- you've gotten really lucky or let's just say, you've gotten a lot of favorability in a lot of things too. Yeah. You know? I have. And, I, and I'm, I'm well aware of that fact. So all I'm the well bad, it kind of equals out right now. And like you yeah. said, you know, eventually that luck or whatever you want to call it or if you don't believe in luck whatever mm-hmm. the hell because you know we're both kind of conspiracy guys in a way yeah, and yeah, have yeah. these odd beliefs that people think we're nuts no but, i'm into numerology <clears throat> and i believe in signs yeah, yeah yeah so it is going to run out you know Eventually, yeah. yeah and in this next time i'm not going to be lucky i'm gonna be doing 10 20 years oh right, yeah they're gonna rock it and i'm not gonna swallow that pill. and and you're I'm in 2020 not. now where when you got hit you know, fraud was, you know, the credit card fraud was big, but now it, yeah. it's, it's a whole different. It was new then. Yeah. That's what I was trying like to say. Like really, they had really hadn't prosecuted that many cases mm-hmm. up to that point. I mean, now they, they've got it down and you know, but they're, yeah. they're knocking heads off now. Yeah. Now they're knocking heads off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're working at Tesla. That's amazing. Yeah. Congrats on that. I give yeah. that to you. You know, that's awesome. And, and that's just, I feel privileged sitting next to somebody that worked at Tesla because I think Elon's just amazing. And then yeah, it was a fun job. And then you hurt your back. Yeah, I was out in disability for a while. Okay, yeah. and then um, and then where do you go from there? Um, well, I had to figure out how to make money. Right. You know, with you know, without having a real job, and that was like, you know, what do I have? What other skills do I have? You know, what I mean, what can I? What other skills do I have to fall back on? Do well, I have to rely on? Well, and, you got a shit ton of. And it, well, I d- I do, and it was like, okay, I can do graphic design. I can do freelance graphic design. You know, which I did start doing, 
um, while I was on disability, just as a way to, I would set up, you know, I would just do like a, like Fiverr. You ever heard of that, that, that webpage mm-hmm. Fiverr? And, yeah. and I would do stuff like that. I was making a little bit of money here and there. And then um, I, I, I hooked up with this dude. Um, I went to go get a tattoo or something, man. And, and like, with from him and like I've all I know I've been tattooing pretty much since around 2005 2006 or something like that but it was always just like something I just was like fucking around with never took it seriously I never even considered it as a career option or anything like that I'm like yeah there's no way I'm not gonna drive a Lamborghini tattooing you know what I mean but like tattooing at that point in time to me didn't mean as much as it did it does as it does now mm-hmm. like it's my it's I it's my entire life now you know what I mean? But at that point in time, I it just didn't really because I was doing the carding and I was making all the money. Like, it just wasn't. You know, I mean, it was fun and it was a hobby, but it wasn't. I didn't take it serious. You know. And at this point, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can make a little bit of money. So I so I hook up this dude and, you know, he's tattooing me and like he was just a really cool dude and like I started talking to him about tattooing. He's like, man, you should fucking. I told him I showed him a little bit like pictures of stuff I had done. You know what I mean? It wasn't really that good. He's like, yeah, dude, you should just fucking jump back into it, man. He's like, this is California. You know what I mean? This is fucking. This is where it's at. Everybody's out here tattooing. You know, just do your thing. You know, and that's what I was like, okay, maybe I can, maybe I can make a decent living doing it. Yeah. So then you're in California, so now. So now I'm yeah. living in San Francisco and uh, I start tattooing. I start tattooing up there in San Francisco, uh, just out of like a private studio, just doing, you know, here and there. And uh, the Bay Area, I don't know if you uh, know about the Bay Area, it's like extremely expensive. It's yeah. Un- it's, it's unlivable. Mm-hmm. If you don't make $100,000, even if you do make $100,000, you're still fucking. Their taxes are so crazy. Though. California's insane. Um, so I couldn't live in the Bay anymore. Not because I wasn't making Tesla money anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, Tesla money was allowing me to live in the Bay Area, barely. What were you making at Tesla? Oh, uh, they started me at 22 bucks an hour. God damn. Yep. And I think I went all the way up to 25 because I worked my way up to just like a regular, log- like a regular forklift driver. Yeah. I started as a forklift driver, just unloading trucks. And then I became a logistics coordinator because listen, I was working there with 18 and 19 year old kids that had no fucking clue. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're losing parts. They're fucking, they, they, shit's missing. The line gets shut down. It's like $60,000 a fucking every 30 minutes, the line shut down or something like that. And I just knew logistics. I just had a knack for it. You know? So I, it was, it wasn't easy to fucking step over all these kids. You know what I mean? And work my way up to, a, a, eventually I was a logistics coordinator and I was fucking, you know, wow, I wasn't awesome. running the show, but I was, yeah. I was making good money. Well, so yeah, yeah, they bumped tw- my. 25 would benefit shit. Yeah. They bumped my, yeah. They bumped my pay up and so, you know, I'm doing all right. You yeah. know, I'm driving. I went and bought a Mercedes, a C-Class and yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm doing all right. I'm cruising around the Bay Area in a Mercedes. <laughs> I'm working for Tesla. You know, I'm doing all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, so I just decided to do tattooing, man. I just decided to make it my life. You know, because I enjoy doing it. And it's just something yeah, I'm you really, gotta love it. I'm really passionate about it. You gotta it. love it. Because if you, know? you, if you don't, you yeah. know where that's And if I, if I were to get like a million dollars, if I were to go, if I were to hit the big game, you know, tomorrow, you know, Powerball or whatever. And I, I had enough money to where I didn't have to worry about money for the rest of my life. I would still tattoo. Yeah. I would do it. You know what I mean? Just because it's it's what I love to do. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. something you love. Yeah. And, and that will keep you straight, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you, you love know, to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I just immerse yourself in the tattoo. It's, it's not just about tattooing itself. It's the whole culture. Yeah. It's the community. You know what I mean? It's a very tight-knit community, and it's it's all positivity, like within the tattooing community in, in this country. It's it's, it's mostly 90% positive. You've got your, you got your oddball scumbags. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, for the most part, it's all positive. You know what I mean? And it, we all help each other out. Like, if you ever need anything, like, you know, he's like famous, like, tattoo. I know this guy. I, 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 follow, I don't know him personally, but say, like, I follow his work, and I, like, I follow him on Instagram, and, like, I follow his life, and I know he's a pretty good dude, like, you know what I mean? Like, if he has an accident, like a GoFundMe or something like that, bomb. You know what I mean? We take care. We t- we we all take care. You kind of have like your own little family thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah like brother, I, I always call it like brotherhood type thing. Yeah. You know Even what like I mean? I've never met these people personally. Like I know if they ever needed anything, and I was able to do something for them, I would. Yeah. Because I, I know that that they you know what I mean? Like if I had a, if they, they knew who I was and they followed my work and you know what I mean, they would help me out. Yeah, that, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And that's that's something that I've never had anywhere, even growing up, and like, is a sense of like family and like and camaraderie and camaraderie. Yeah. 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 And then, do you stay in L.A.? Uh, yeah, so I moved, or not LA, I, moved California. From, I moved from San Francisco. I moved uh, down to L.A., <clears throat> and I lived in L.A. for about two and a half years. Oh, no, I want to say about two and a half, about a year. I lived in L.A. for about a year, and, um, you know, this is when COVID hit, and all this shit just started going crazy, and they were killing cops, and they're burning cop cars, and all the social unrest, and the fucking, all the shit, the lockdowns, and, like, I couldn't take L.A. You were there for that? Oh, I just left LA. I just I, I left LA October first. Oh wow! Yeah. So how, I, how crazy is it? We're just yeah. I've only been gone a month. It's crazy out there. It's yeah. It's unlivable. 
Unbelievable. It's unlivable. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's sad because California is such a beautiful state, yeah. but it's unlivable. I used to go there all the time for yeah. Lakers games. Oh, I loved it. And yeah, I, I like, loved yeah. it. I lived there four years. But I mean, I, I've, I've been, been all over there California. Since 2000, shit, I haven't been there since 2012. Yeah, yeah, I've been all over California, man, all over, all the way up north to, you know, all the way up to tip top to the very bottom, mm-hmm. and everywhere in between. I love it. Santa I love Monica the state. is beautiful. Santa Monica is beautiful. Uh, Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach is great. Yeah, I mean, Newport I lived, Beach is great. Yeah, I lived in Anaheim, like just, oh, yeah. just right by like Huntington Beach, down by Beach Beach Boulevard and mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, so I mean, you know, California, it's it's a great place. There's good food, and you know, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good people that live there. It's the, it's the people who actually are, 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 you know, making the laws and the policies and everything that are just turning the place into it's a crazy. complete shithole. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. It's fucking sad. Yeah, they're, ruin, they're ruining a good place. Yeah. Because you know, I loved it. But in 2012, it wasn't all this nut yeah. stuff. I left, uh, yeah, so I left October 1st. I'm not going to give away my location. No, no, that's okay. But I'm in the yeah. desert now. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. In the, I'm in the middle of the fucking desert. Yeah. You know, I got I got beautiful mountain views and I had beautiful sunsets and it's quiet and I'm happy and I'm tattooing and I get to wake up every single day and do whatever I want to do. And, and I don't have to worry about shit. And you don't have to look over your shoulder nothing, or anything and you nothing. love what you do and yeah. you love where you're at. My bills get paid. I'm able to buy the things that I want to buy. I'm able to wake up every day and just go to the gym and relax and work out and you know what I mean? Like just really fucking focus on myself and being healthy. You know what I mean? Physically and mentally and, and just overall, like, really trying to, like, get ahead. That's great, man. Yeah. That's, that's really great. Yeah. And even though, I, even though if I'm not probably never going to have Lamborghini money again, I mean, who knows? I and mean, what kind of business ventures I'll get into in the future and I've got this whole book deal and, you know, who, who the fuck knows what's going to happen. But even if I don't, like, I'm happy. Yeah. Like, I'm happy. I don't make that much money tattooing. You know what I mean? I don't make that much money. I make enough money to, to be able to not work a fucking legitimate job and be able to do whatever I want. Right. And for me, that's enough. You know what I mean? I drive a new car. I have a brand new car. You know what I mean? That's nice. I live in a nice fucking place. You know what I mean? But you and I both know that money does not make you happy. You can no. have all the money in the world. We both have it. it. You know what? But it takes you going down that path and getting the money to find that out. Right. Because you, know? you because before you, you have can tell it, you, a broke motherfucker that all day long and that doesn't you're never gonna You you said yeah. it perfect. Because until you because until you have it, you think that that Lamborghini or that Bentley yeah. or that million is going to make you happy. I think Jim Carrey said it best. And he said, I wish everybody could be rich and famous to find out that being rich and famous doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't improve your quality of life any. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's said very well. Yeah. It is. Because it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it, you can't. It took me a long time to believe that you couldn't buy happiness. Yeah. I always thought, well, if I had this, I'll be happy. And then in my life, like things start adding up and I'd have it and have it and have it. And I remember many times, you know, I would look and I would, I would have all the things I wanted, you know, but I would look and I would, it would be like four o'clock in the morning and I would go look at something or whatever it may be. And I, I just, I'll never forget like many nights, you know, three, 4 AM. I, and I would just go downstairs, say to get something to eat or whatever. And I'd be like, why am I miserable? Yeah. You know, like yeah. I have everything I want. Why am I miserable? There, there's something there's that is missing. A black hole that you can never fill. That you're trying to yeah. fill with all of this material shit because you think the next thing you buy is gonna make you happy. Right. I mean, I had all the Cadillacs, I had Rolexes, I had you know nice jewelry, and it was like, that. Don't get me wrong, the shit's fucking dope. You had the Jubilee Rolex chain, I did, man. Yeah. You were telling when we were, before you came on, you were telling me. Yeah. You had the Rolex Jubilee chain, thirty and yeah. not not yeah. eighteen inch. Thirty. Thirty. Yeah, to match the, to to match the day the day date with the with the jubilee. That's, yeah. that's big I was boy. doing them, and don't get me wrong, all this shit's cool, and it did bring oh, me yeah. happiness. Oh yeah, Like don't don't let somebody tell Temporary you temporary happiness. It, well, there's a difference, and I it took me it took me going through all this to learn that there's two different kinds of happiness. There's the happiness that having shit and doing shit brings you, which is it's it, it's fun and it's its own thing. It's its own happiness. It don't 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 you can't take you can't steal anything away from that. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter because it does matter and it is fun and all that shit is fun. But then you've got the internal darkness inside of you that just there's you always feel like there's something missing. And buying all of this shit and going crazy and having the money only exacerbates that and makes it fucking worse. Yeah. Makes it fucking worse. You know what, John? I think you're, I think the right word that we're both like trying to pick out is fulfilled. Right. So like you could buy yeah. all this stuff and yeah, and you're like never fulfilled. You, but and you're happy because you know, you're always looking to the next thing. Yeah, but like okay, but I, it doesn't yeah. fulfill you yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's an example. 
like I always wanted a Mercedes. Like growing up, I always wanted one. Always wanted one. Always wanted one. I you know I cut out pictures. I'd fucking draw them. And it wasn't until later on in life that I finally got it. That I had I had got, I think I bought like a, it was a C63, really fucking nice one with yeah, the turbo. Yeah, they're AMG. A fucking AMG. Yeah. Just immaculate vehicle. I mean, I thought that this was this was my. What color did you get? Uh, mine was silver. Sick. Yeah, and it never looks dirty either. Never looks dirty. Mine was all my cars were silver, and, <laughs> and by some weird like universe working its weird magic, every vehicle, most ninety percent of the vehicles that I've ever purchased have been silver. Yeah, not because I chose it, but because somehow or some way my my cars end up being like the vehicle I have now is silver. Yeah, it's just it's fucking weird. Yeah, but yeah, you had the AMG package with the turbo and the fucking, and I was like, man, if I can just get this car, I'll never want another car ever again. Like this is this is it. This is this is the pinnacle of success for me. Like this vehicle was the pinnacle of success, and I got it. And I bought the vehicle and I had it, and it it brought me a lot of joy. But it didn't stop that wanting need that I thought it was gonna mm-hmm. that, that, that I thought it was gonna do. I thought it was gonna make me not feel that way anymore. You know what I mean? Like I, that it wasn't gonna take that want away, but it didn't. It, for a little while, it did. But then I wanted I wanted another one. Like I wanted the fucking the S five hundred. Yeah. Now I want the S five hundred. Now now, you, the, now the, I'm, you know what I mean. Now yeah. I want the bigger, the better, the fucking the bigger engine, the more luxury. I want the fucking the the panoramic dual fucking. Yeah, you want the S five hundred AMG. Fucking, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I want the big motherfucker. Yeah. So it just you know, it it just it exacerbates that, and it's just like a fucking a, a dog chasing its tail or right. a snake eating its it's own fucking tail. It's a chase that never ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then one day, and it sounds like you've reached it. You have to find internal happiness. You have yeah. to find something that's not external that makes you happy. Something that's not, you're not chasing that makes you happy. You have to find something that internally brings you peace. Something that you just really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think could, that's my opinion. No, I couldn't agree with you and, more. You know what I mean? That's just what I think. But like you said, you have to go up that hill, get to that hill, and you know financially have that yeah. kind of yeah. capability to get some of these things. Yeah. And then you realize that that isn't everything, you know, and sometimes it's just better to have a a life where you're not looking over your shoulder or a life where you're not people where everybody isn't around you because of your money. Like you're going out to the club buying the VIP. I was doing the same thing. Now, in our minds, because we're not dumb and I could tell you're very intelligent that, you know, in the back of your head. And I don't know if you have you had these thoughts during that time. I'm surrounded by snakes. You know that. Yeah, you no, know you that. subconsciously, you, you put know. Your, you put yourself in that position. Right, purposely. W- weird. Yeah. It's fucking weird. You, yep. Like, you know what you're doing. You know these people. You're partying with them now, but they could fucking rob you in the parking lot at the end of the night. Yeah. It's, it's wild. And you know. It's wild. And you know in the back of your head, and I remember, like, it would cross my mind, but I would quick shove it out. And I, I would just have, like, a moment, and I think, would any of these people be around me right now if yeah. I didn't have... The VIP at the yeah. club and have all wanna, these problems. You don't want to think those thoughts. I don't want to accept it. Kills, it. it kills the kills. Right. It ruins the mood. So I block it out. It kills the moment. Yeah. If I, if I didn't have these cars, because you want to believe that all these people are your right. friends. You want to believe that man, I'm the most popular guy in the block. You know what I mean? All these women just love me because I'm so good looking. But I, but I'm treating them as a friend. You know, because you're a good guy. And if if they're yeah, yeah, even yeah. though me I, too. I, you, you know, we I have. Was, the I was money. paying people's car notes. Oh. I was paying people's mortgages for them. Man, I helped so many people with fucking going to college. I, I gave people money when they didn't have shit, when they just got out of jail. Yeah. And then I go to prison and not a phone call or a visit, not even a dollar on my oh, commissary. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. And 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 like like you were saying, you know, even when I had everything, if somebody, if one of my friends that I made myself believe that was a friend, got a flat tire at three o'clock in the morning, you know, look, I could be that cocky asshole. I'd be like, I would have gotten up and I've actually, I did it. I'd get up and go on the catch one turnpike, help him with the tire, get him a ride, whatever. And you know, when everything, when, when I had a situation, mm-hmm. nobody was there for me. That's how, that's how it always goes. <laughs> that's the fucking, you know? and the thing is, yeah. John, you, like, the name we, of the we game. both knew it. The whole time, at the you, end, you yeah, but you subconsciously know you, it going you, through. Yeah, it. which you you compartmentalize those. Yeah, kinds of that, things. that's the word I'm looking you for. You compartmentalize mm-hmm. those kinds of things because it's gonna fucking ruin the mood. It's gonna take all the fun. Yeah. away. Yeah, you want to live in this fantasy land that you've cooked up for yeah. yourself. It kills the buzz. Yeah, because that's the paradigm that you're living in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. So now you got the book out. Ben, you got it on yeah, Amazon. Rocking. You're yeah. rocking with we're it. We're rocking. It's doing. It's not really doing what I want it to do right now. But it's hopefully. Early. 
You know what? Like, yeah, I have no expectations, man. If it takes off, it takes off. As you know, good things take time. Yeah. Not, not, nothing's quick. Yeah, but I just it, forget about it, man. I just, you know, put it just in the back let of my it mind. Sit, and, it will roll, and then yeah. it's, it's a great book you get on Amazon. Yeah. And then you're, you said you're going to do a YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I'm starting my own YouTube channel here. Uh, maybe I'm probably film some content for that today and okay. tomorrow, and I'm probably gonna, you know, it's gonna be live hopefully this week. Yeah, and uh, and what are you gonna do with it? Uh, you know, I'm not really. Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't even thought about what kind of content I want to make or whatever. I just know that I I feel like I need to. You yeah. Know what I mean, like I I I, just, I feel like I have to. Like I feel like I have some. There's some kind of contribution that I can make through this medium. Through this podcasting medium, right? You know, it's such it's it's we're, it's in its infancy right now. Mm-hmm. I think. You know I mean, it's taken off. It's been around for a while, but I think that this is the, this is the new medium. You know what I mean? This is this is it. This is like this is the new prime time. This is the new cable television. You know what I mean? This is it. This is how everybody's communicating. This is this. So I I feel like I need to be involved. Like I well, feel like I need to it. be. If they shut things down and people don't go to work and don't have money, they can still put on YouTube, right? Yeah, you they can, can do still a podcast get... anywhere. I can podcast in my bathroom sitting on my toilet. And and people can watch it for free. Now, yeah. they might have to watch yeah. a couple ads to yeah. watch for free, but they can watch for free. And now, go back you know, from when we started. Think of all the things that you just told me. Okay. Okay. The, the crime spree that you went through, right? The hell that that was. The nightmare that it was. The, the anxiety that you got. Yeah. The, yeah. the emotional stress. But then think about it. You recon the house, okay? I mean, sure, yeah. I mean, so now you you got I call you Johnny Cards, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know you, you got you got Johnny Cards here, who reconned the house. So now think, Johnny Cards just doesn't have to be the guy that was the fraudster. Mm-hmm. Okay, you were fraudster, identity right. theft, right. whatever. So that's what you're maybe initially known by, and you'll you'll attract attention from. Mm-hmm. But you can take that to pull in people right but you recon the house okay so you could do a uh uh clip on tiling yeah. okay like yeah. how you do all that yeah. all the stuff that you learned with cars you know you yeah. know cars yeah. how to change all, all that stuff yeah. dude uh, yeah I'm, i mean you've got a pile not only that is i i kind of feel like i'm tattooing I'm, I'm a pretty eccentric individual yeah i'm um, just in general so i like just Maybe like my thoughts that I'm that I'm having like I have a lot of random crazy fucking thoughts. Yeah, you know what I mean. Maybe I should just start filming those. And you're and you're charismatic. You are. You know, you're not the first person to tell me that. Yeah. No, you're charismatic. I've been told that I am charismatic. So yeah. So so I think I think if you do it, it will do well because yeah. You, yeah. you are charismatic and it it will attract people to to watch you. You know because yeah. you're not like. You know, yeah, we'll see how it all unfolds. Un- uncharismatic would be the nice word to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't even know if that's a word, but yeah. yeah. Some dudes, you're just like, I'm done after two minutes. Yeah, you're or right. You, as soon as you hear their voice, you're just like, yeah. oh, God, I can't yeah. fucking listen to this I guy can for two and a half them. hours. And I, I don't know how they have what they have, yeah, but hey, yeah, good, yeah. good for them. But yeah, you're right. I, I, I can't watch it. Yeah, it's not but for me. when you do it, I want you to do one on Photoshop for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will put it out, and then that's what I'm going to title it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say for Tommy. <laughs> yep. This one's for Tommy. Yeah, because I need to know. All right, thank you. I want to have you in again. Oh, I definitely want to come back. So when, you know, so much more to get into. Yeah, yeah, so much yeah. More. I like to do it in parts. You know, like sure. uh, like a big guy like you, has, who's got a big brain and just full of knowledge, and and I, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I'm telling you the truth. I I'm sure you could tell no, from so many. I ain't yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, I I don't kiss nobody's ass. That's not my thing. But but you are. You're so full of knowledge and the Illuminati thing. I mean. We could probably do three hours just on conspiracies. Oh, I would, that would love be to do awesome. a fucking three-hour conspiracy yeah, podcast, dude, I love man. It too. We can fucking dive balls deep into that if yeah, you want to. Yeah, let's do it, man. Right, let's right. do one on conspiracy. We'll do one on all kinds of shit, yeah, man. Hell yeah. And I, I think it'll be fun. And you know, you could throw it on your channel. You know, it don't matter. You know, it's with this. I found with the YouTube thing, it's kind of like you were saying with the the tattoo thing with some people. It's kind of like everybody's willing to help everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The podcasting community is pretty great. I mean, you've got some. You got you, you got, got your, your yeah. asshole. You got your assholes, yeah. but man, yeah, like you said, it's like it's just a medium I want to get into. Like I yeah. really, I feel like I need to be get a part into of it, it because uh, I think it'd be a disgrace if you wouldn't. Okay. You know, so to so yeah. do the YouTube yeah. thing, and I'm on it. And some of it might be who gives a fuck, you know? But do it because you want to do it, and fuck it. Yeah. If it, if it makes money, it makes money. If it's just something for fun, fuck it. Right. Right. right? Yeah. Just treat it like that until yeah. Yeah, because you got your main thing. Your love yeah. is the tattoo. Get yeah. into it, and you know. And I think everybody's trying to be like the next Rogan. Oh, you know what I mean? I think that's just kind of like unrealistic. I copied off of him. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, but you know what? Listen, John. Yeah. I said all the time. I got the balls to say. It. Okay. I copied off him 
one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like the way he did it. I liked his long. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing podcast. wrong with that. He's at, he's at the top. Yeah. And J- Rogan will, Rogan will tell himself start a podcast. He tells yeah. everybody to start a podcast. Start start a podcast. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. I copied him. Eight. I took screenshots and I said this is how I want it to look. Yeah. I don't. I copied him. A hundred percent. And congrats on him on the hundred mil. Yeah, yeah. Well, big, hats off. Big boy style. Yeah. But it took him ten years to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of struggle. You know, and, it's, yeah. and you know what? He did it naturally. He, it was all yeah. homogenous. Yeah. It was all fucking one thousand percent homogenous, man. And I think so. Everybody respects him the way they do. Yeah, because his main thing was the comedy, you know. And then he just did the podcast with friends, yeah. you know, to have yeah. fun. Just fucking know? around, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you, I, I have you on the hook to come back for a conspiracy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, man. Thank you for your time, John. No, thank you. Get the book bent. You have your YouTube channel up. You'll let me know when that's up and running. Yeah, yeah. And I'll put it in, in the links and, and push it and help yeah, you push yeah. it. Yeah, if you want to connect with me through social media, it's uh, Slum by Nature uh, at, at Instagram. Yeah. Spell that out. Uh, S-L-U-M-B-Y-N-A-T-U-R-E. Okay, Slum by Nature. And then do you have a Facebook page? No, I don't participate in the Facebook. I agree with you. <laughs> I only use it for business. I yeah, well, I'm, I'm a narcissist. Mm-hmm. I'm a complete narcissist, so yeah. Instagram is, you know, just feeds that. Yeah, good. So give your Instagram one more time. Uh, it's at Slum by Nature. At Slum by Nature. Yes, so, sir. So go check him out there. Get the book on Amazon. Stay tuned for his uh, YouTube channel, and really stay tuned for him to come back on Big the conspiracy. Big things are coming. Big, Big things. things coming. Yeah. Thank you, John. Cool.